San Diego. Tonight, our Mountain West showdown is the New Mexico Lobos against the San Diego State Aztecs. Hi, everyone. I'm Dave McCann. We welcome you to this one. It's an intriguing one because both teams need to win to keep hopes alive for winning the conference championship. Here's a look at the standings. Utah now alone at the top, having beaten UNLV earlier today. Back on Thursday, Colorado State knocked off Air Force. BYU and Wyoming are still playing each other in our matchup. New Mexico and San Diego State. Joined in the booth by Dan McGuire and Mike Powers. Welcome, gentlemen. An interesting night for New Mexico. We want to see a lot of Dontrell Moore, if we're the Lobos. Dontrell Moore, the freshman of the year in the Mountain West Conference one year ago, and having a very fine sophomore season, although he has been bothered by some nagging injuries. He loves to get into the end zone, really smells it. He's strong enough to go inside, fast enough to go outside. Nine touchdowns rushing this season. Rocky Long would love to get the ball to him 30 times. If that happens, that'll take the pressure off the quarterback. Casey Kelly, who has been inconsistent this year. In fact, he was benched at one point, but he is back. You take the heat off Casey Kelly, and he's a fine quarterback. In San Diego, no one likes to compare anybody to Marshall Falk, but here comes Lionel Hamilton, a freshman running all over the place, Dan. True freshman. He's averaging four and a half uh, yards a carry. He's running uh, downhill all the time. He is a big back. He knows how to block. He's done very, very well. He's on his way to a 1,000-yard rushing season this year, and they're comparing him to Marshall Falk. And for him to do well, they're going to have to carry the ball at least 30 times tonight. Adam Hall this year, is, uh, he's 43 of 84, 609 yards passing, three touchdowns and two interceptions. They got lots of weapons. The tough thing for those four guys is we got two of the best defenses in the entire Mountain West going tonight. San Diego State, number one overall. New Mexico, number one defending the run. We'll find out who will prevail coming up. San Diego State and New Mexico, the showdown on Sports West on a Saturday night in the Mountain West. Kickoff's coming up. Between these two, the Aztecs have a 20 to nine lead. The last five games have been decided by a total of 19 points. And New Mexico, which has won three of the last four, has won the last two in San Diego. Wes Zunker, ready to kick it off. Kyle Connerly and Jason Van are deep for San Diego State. The kickoff's presented by Crystal Inn, where we delight every guest every day, one at a time. Dave McCann, Dan McGuire, Mike Powers settling in. Nice to have you with us as these two teams try to get back on track. New Mexico dropped their conference opener at home to BYU. San Diego State also lost to BYU, and they lost to Utah last week. Rocky Long told us this week he thinks the conference champion will have two losses, and that keeps both of these teams in play. Rocky Long doesn't want to call this a must-win situation, but it's probably that way for San Diego State. And the ball takes a bounce into the end zone. And the Aztecs will start from the 20. And our first look at Adam Hall started his collegiate career at the University of Texas transferred over and he's been banged up he's got a flak jacket on he's got an ankle brace and if he can just live through the first half I think Tom Kraft will be a happy man 17 touchdown passes a year ago he's thrown three this season and we'll set the lineups for you in a moment but Adam Hall has an outstanding running back in Lionel Hamilton so on first and ten from the 20 Ortiz harassed and dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Daniel Garonski leading the charge for New Mexico. Now the starting lineups presented by NordicTrack.com. Lice and Adventure. Get ready for it online. The offensive line for San Diego State. Jesper Harvey, the sophomore center. Hamilton, Justice Ortiz, Pitts, and Webb. Keep an eye on Jeff Webb. He had 253 yards receiving and three touchdowns against BYU. New Mexico has allowed a handful of very big touchdown plays. 70, 72, and 79. So we'll see Adam Hall test the Lobo secondary. But on second down, Hamilton goes nowhere. And he's dropped in the backfield. And it'll be third and long. DJ Renteria, senior out of Roswell High School in New Mexico making the stop and there you see Renteria with Rupp, Kegler and Ratcliffe. Busy group of linebackers and they're all good. Struther, Garonski and Spiegel. And in the secondary, Golden leading the way and 
Rocky Long believes this group will be truly tested tonight in dealing with Adam Hall. Third down and 13. Blitz is on. Ball in the pocket, a man open. And it's a first down catch from Robert Ortiz. There was one spot, Dave, in the secondary that was open, and Ortiz managed to find it about 15 yards downfield. 22 yards and a first down. Great pickup by the back here. Adam stepping up, seeing Ortiz downfield. Great catch. So, the Aztec offense takes a big, deep breath. And they settle down for their second set of downs after the first down pick. Hamilton again. Dances across the 40 to the 42. We mentioned earlier, New Mexico's the number one team defending the run in the Mountain West. And here comes San Diego. Really needs to run the ball to get things going. Zach Rupp the makes the stop. Well, this should be a great matchup of, of front down linemen because, of course, the Aztecs are big as usual, while one of New Mexico's strength, in fact, maybe their number one strength on defense is that front three. A gain of three on the first down run, second and seven. And the blitz from New Mexico. And Hall delivers on target Devin Pitts. And Pitts in the Lobo territory, brought down at the 27 by Gabriel Fulbright. Fulbright is a converted safety, relatively new to that quarterback spot. And watch how far off he is. And I, you won't be able to see it on this re replay, but he was at least 10 yards off from the get-go, and that's why the receiver was able to get so far over. Kevin Pitts started his career at USC, went to El Camino Junior College. Both Pitts and Webb bring a lot of speed. Still young in this system for Tom Kraft, but very capable. And Hall has started the game three of three for 52 yards. From the 28, and Hall wants some more, and throws over the head of Jeff Webb. This is a great start for the Aztecs. They wanted to come out and uh, see if they can pick up the blitz. They've done that. Converted two big uh, third down plays. First downs, and they're doing quite well. Mike, you made the point that the Lobo secondary has given a whole lot of room to these Aztec receivers. Dan, as a quarterback, and you see that early, what do you do to take advantage? You can check off, hit the quick hitches, hit the quick uh, seam routes like they did there to Ortiz. A uh, lot of vulnerabilities in the defense here. But if they can pick up the blitz and get the ball out of Adam Hall's hands, they'll do just fine. Second down and 10 from the 28. Hamilton tries the right side. Oh, baby. Go to the house. Hamilton inside the 15. Inside the 10. Kyle Coulter on the stop. 20-yard run for the freshman out of Stockton, California. We would mentioned one of the most decorated players to sign with the Aztecs in 15 years since the Marshall Falk era. One of the disadvantages of playing your corner so deep is there's nobody there if the running back breaks that initial coverage. And it's it's not just giving cushion to the receiver, it's giving cushion to the running back. Too. There's absolutely no run support. You're exactly right. Seven plays, 72 yards on the drive. First and goal, San Diego State. Hamilton in the backfield. <laughs> Brick wall. That's not very forgiving. This is a New Mexico team that doesn't give up many rushing touchdowns to begin with. You see Daryl Golden, former walk-on, a senior leading the charge. One thing this New Mexico defense has done a little bit as of late is bend but don't break. They'll let teams go from, from 20 to 20, but they've been pretty good when the opposition gets inside the red zone. Lobos have allowed just two rushing touchdowns all season long. And they even get more stingy as we move into the second San half. First San Diego State, State calls timeout. a timeout. They sense the Lobo defense stiffening up in the red zone. As Mike mentioned, they're number one in the conference, allowing only five touchdowns in 16 trips inside the 20-yard line. Now a look at tonight's game task list presented by Franklin Covey. And for these two clubs to get out of here with a win, for the New Mexico Lobos, number one is defend the deep ball. We've talked about it, and there's a reason why those corners are backing off, because they have been burned this season, in large part because of the inexperience. And New Mexico, on the offensive side of the ball, needs to establish the running game. That means Dontrell Moore, 25, 30 carries. That's the way to go for that Lobo attack. Offensively for San Diego State, mix it up. Run, pass, 
Uh, don't need to do a lot of things fancy. Just do what you can do uh, on, the, on the basic side of things, uh, moving the ball downfield. And then defensively, they want to put a lot of players in the box to stop Dontrell Moore. We talk about that balance, Dan. We've seen that balance on this opening drive. We have. Uh, they've done a nice job of play calling here. They've done a few uh, checkoffs. Uh, I've noticed Adam check off to a couple of run plays and a quick uh, a quick pass. So I think uh, this game uh, will be predicated on how Adam Hall reads the defense, this 3-3-5 defense, and uh, checking off to quick hits and uh, checking off to uh, decent runs. All right, after the timeout, Hall sets up in the shotgun. It's second down and goal from the nine-yard line. This is one area where Tom Kraft uh, said earlier this week that he's been having some troubles down here. They've had a hard time getting in the end zone, and uh, let's watch and see. J.C. Mejia has kicked 16 field goals on the season. Blitz is on, and they try to drop it off for Michael Franklin off his hands, and it's third and goal from the nine. I think it was deflected. Let's take another look. I think what happened that time is Franklin just immediately went out into the flat instead of checking with that blitzing safety coming up. Might have slowed him down, might have had an opportunity to give his quarterback a little bit more time. And at 6-6, Nick Spiegel can get in the way of a whole lot of things without ever touching the football. Tenth play of their opening drive, third and goal from the nine. to stay on the ground to Hamilton and Hamilton takes it to the five so an interesting call DJ Renteria on the tackle getting some help from Golden and it is fourth down and the field goal unit is coming on interesting call here as you mentioned Dave a, a team that has struggled inside the red zone you wouldn't think this would be the number one option giving the ball to Hamilton from nine yards out in fact I was thinking maybe they were thinking it's four down territory JC Mejia in to attempt a 22-yard field goal. He's 14 of 16 on the season. Second best in the Mountain West. And this is a chip shot. No yeah. such thing as a chip shot. I've, I've had a lot of chip shots on the golf course and never did find the green. It's no good. But Mejia just his third on miss line. on the first season. Down. And New Mexico catches a break and they'll take over the football. Tom Kraft had mentioned they've used J.C. Mejia way too much in the red zone this season. They use him here and miss a chip shot. Lobo football when we come back. Here early in the first quarter, a missed 22-yard field goal, and here it is. Yeah, this is a tough chip shot here. It's uh, from the right hash. In college, the hashes are wide here, and uh, there, there is no gimme from that close. So Mejia on the miss. Lobos with the ball for the first time from their own 20. Dontrell Moore behind Casey Kelly. New Mexico, too, with a group of very talented and fast receivers. Some play action on first down, and Kelly wants the deep ball. Incomplete. Intended for Dwight Counter. Defended by Jacob Elamimian. Elamimian did a real nice job of waiting until Dwight Counter looked up toward the ball, then he looked up right at the last second, batted it away. Look at Kelly. Rocky Long says if he's given time, he's got the ability to make great decisions in the backfield in the pass game. Last year against this Aztec defense, 9 of 15, just 70 yards, but he ran a 13-yard touchdown in a very low-scoring game. Second down and 10. Sanders in motion. And our first look at Moore. And Moore, a yard. And that's all. John Moore, a sophomore out of Roswell, New Mexico. Here's a look at the starting lineups for New Mexico. And no one's happier than Rocky Long to see Jason Lindsmeyer back in the lineup. The veteran injured his left knee against BYU. He's missed a couple of weeks, but he's back. Moore, Bird, Counter, and Boyd. Some of the skills players we'll see in this football game tonight. We'll see a lot of more. Third down and nine. Counter in motion. <laughs> Kelly, down he goes. Sacked by Matt McCoy. Dontrell Moore did a nice job of blocking McCoy initially, but he wasn't able to keep him down, and Casey Kelly stepped right into him, as you see it right here. And McCoy, his seventh tackle for a loss this season. 
One of the very active linebackers on this Aztec team. Tyler Goss into punt for New Mexico, local product out of San Diego. Averaging 40 yards. Kyle Connerly deep for the Aztecs. Goss, no blocks on the year. His longest, a 57-yard punt against Utah State. This one is low. And Connerly has to kick it in reverse to stay away from it. 53-yard punt. This Sports West College football telecast is brought to you in part by Advantage Rent-A-Car. Book online at arac.com and receive double frequent rental club points from Advantage. Tyler Goss came over to the sidelines a little bit disgusted with himself, but uh, certainly it ended up being a, dis uh, a workable punt after the nice roll. Well, you always want to kick great when your family is watching, right? There's a lot of pressure on him tonight. So we'll see what adjustments the Aztecs made. They moved down the field rather easily. First time out, but missed a 22-yard field goal. And Paul changes the call at the line of scrimmage. Hamilton in the backfield. And now it is Paul running for his life, and he throws it away. In the old days, I think even if you go back to... Uh, go ahead, uh, Some of the defenders tonight for... New Mexico, Ayata, Miller, Bales, and Rager. This for San Diego State, McCoy, Morris, and Larson. They're all resting on the sideline. They'll be back in. And the secondary showed Elamimi and Grigsby. And I was just going to say that, that going back over the years, even back when you played, Dan, San Diego State was much better getting to the end zone from further out almost than once it got inside the 20-yard lines. It, it had trouble uh, punching it in, I think. And we saw a little bit of that tonight. Already. Moore in motion on second and ten. Another blitz. Hall drops it off. And Lionel Hamilton picks up three. Now a late flag. And there may have been a little extra blocking after the whistle. Radcliffe on the stop. I think Jermaine Moore, the wide receiver, pushed one of the Lobos, nailed him well after the play. And it is against San Diego State. Hamilton, second leading rusher in the conference. We see After the player was down, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense. 15-yard penalty, it's third down. And an Aztec lineman is down on the field, and it's Gerald Sykes. Now the play has long since stopped when the pushing continued at the top of the screen. And Sykes being attended to. Sean Dickey is out tonight, so Tom Kraft already having to go to his second unit on that offensive line. Sykes, a senior out of Cary High School in San Diego. All four of six, 55 yards. After the penalty, the ball's resting at the 16-yard line as Sykes hobbles off. A couple of Lobos over to wish him well. And now... It is third and long, third and 22. Dave, as is often the case, I think on that particular personal foul penalty, the officials saw the reaction to a Lobo with a little extracurricular activities. I don't know if it was Brandon Radcliffe at that far side or what, that it, who grabbed Moore and flung him away, and then Moore reacted to that, and thus the penalty. So third and 22, and Adam Hall has a challenge ahead of him. This is where a lot of coaches like to run the draw, but Hall back in the pocket. And he throws intercepted. Brandon Radcliffe. And Radcliffe with the first big defensive play of the football game. He takes it inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. First team all-conference linebacker showing us why. That's one of the few times that the Lobos didn't bring a blitz. Uh, they sat back in the zone, zone coverage, and uh, Adam Hall just happened to overthrow his receiver. Radcliffe was just sitting back, the center Lobos fielder, and there came right to him. Radcliffe has had a little bit of a disappointing season statistically with no sacks and his first interception right there, but you can just see him waiting for this one to come flanking into his arms. And more the intended receiver. First down in Mexico at the 19-yard line. An option look. Kelly on the keeper. 
And he dives to the 15. Heath Farwell, a transfer from San Jose State, making the stop for the Aztecs. Casey Kelly does an adequate job of running the option, but he's not like the old days with Stoney Case or even Graham Lee. He didn't really make the linebacker you know, commit one way or the other. Picked up a few. It is second down and seven. Big offensive line we'll talk about in a moment. Now a toss back. Mike Augustiniak. He's inside the 10. Very close to a first down. Matt McCoy on the tackle. That's just the third reception all season for Augustiniak out of Moriarty High School, Edgewood, New Mexico. Yeah, the Aztecs had that read pretty well there. It's uh, they canned off there, and it's a uh, tight end screen almost over here. This is a little bit of a new wrinkle that Dan Dodd put in for this week. And, and you're right, considering the Aztecs probably had to see that that was pretty good defensive effort. This New Mexico offense is uh, tough to defend against. They do so many different things. They do two back, one back, a lot of motion, a lot of counter motion. It's tough to uh, prepare during the week for a team that does so much offensively. Got just enough for the first down. First and goal, New Mexico at the nine. Trying to cash in on the game's first penalty. Moore inside the five, down near the four. Jonathan Bales on the stop. This. New Mexico offensive line goes 312, 330, 339, 320, 300 across the board. You'd be hard pressed to find a bigger offensive line. Where were those guys when I was playing? <laughs> I think we averaged about 285, 290 up front. But no, these guys are big offensive linemen. They come off the ball hard. They got a great running back in Del Tom Moore. Second and goal from the four. And rough, but Moore went the other way, and Kelly stumbles to the two. Moore went to the right, the option to the left. Marviel Underwood makes the stop at the two yard line. I think the Lobos are lucky Kelly didn't pitch it out there with nobody there. Sometimes you just by habit fling it out there, and you see him tuck it. Actually, picked up a couple of yards. Nothing worse for a quarterback to be on an island like that. Where's my running back? He needs to help me out here. Third and goal. Now the crowd trying to rally the Aztec defense. Number one in the Mountain West. Dontrell Moore with nine rushing touchdowns on the season. Now the option, and Moore this time runs to the left. Touchdown. Nice call. They must have seen something. They run that play back-to-back uh, -back and uh, scored six points there. Number 10 on the season for Moore, the sophomore out of Roswell High School. Not exactly a thing of beauty here. The pitch was a little bit low, but I tell you, Dontrell Moore does a real nice job all season long of getting to the pylon and just getting into the end zone. And it was a mad dash there, but just made. Freshman of the year in the Mountain West a year ago. Wes Junker, 19 of 21 on extra points this season. And he's right down the middle. Brandon Radcliffe with the interception. Don Trailmore with the touchdown. And New Mexico's drawn first blood 7 to nothing. Two cheeseburgers? Yeah. yeah, what kind of cheese do you offer on that? We have American and Swiss. That's it, huh? All right. You're not holding out on us here, are you? You know? You know what we're saying? Look, I don't know if you can see this, but... There's some sort of cheese vault. A cheese what? A cheese vault. Cheese vault? There's no secret stash for VIPs, because we're pretty VIP-ish. Cheese choices. Sonic's got them, others don't. Try Sonic's new double patty melts. Two patties with your choice of pepper jack or smoky cheddar cheese. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. I have my degree and a really great job. The lottery scholarship gave me a great start, and this is the way I can give back. The sky's the limit. Folks, you'll never strike out with a deal from Bob Kerner's Ford Country. It's truck month at Bob's. 
Hawks. Look at the lineup. F-150's closeout price just $229 down and $229 a month. New Rangers just $159 down, $159 a month. And be sure to check out the all-new 2004 F-150s. It's a World Series of savings, and that's no bull. World Series for country. 1101 Montano Northeast, next to Home Depot. No bull. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you in part by Delta. Now, Sky Miles members can check in from their Homer office at Delta.com. Dontrell Moore explaining how his one-yard run was felt like a 50 or a 75-yarder. <laughs> but it's good enough for six, and it's seven to nothing, New Mexico. One thing you won't have from Dontrell Moore is a case of uh, stage fright. He, he loves to be out there. He loves to talk about things. A great interview and just a fun kid to be around. Five-play, 19-yard drive after the interception for the touchdown. And Zucker kicks it to Van at the six. And Van is cut down at the 24. The big play of the first quarter presented by Xbox Live. And here it is, the Xbox big play. actually did, but he overthrew him. Ratcliffe on the interception. And that set up the more touchdown run, and that is the Xbox big play. Dan, I think it'll be interesting to see how San Diego State reacts here. They they drove the field, didn't get any points, they got the ball back and then threw the interception. That just has to kill him off. It does. This is this will show a lot here what they can do if they can move the ball down the field. First down, Hall right back to the air. Throws it high again. But Lionel Penman goes up for it and brings it down. Fulbright on the immediate stop. But he gets almost seven. As far off as these safeties play and corners play, I mean, he can do this all night. So it's up to Adam Hall to, to, to check off and throw the hitches like that or, uh, or run the ball. Um, you know, one thing about Penman on my notes, I have great leaper, and I think he showed it right there. I don't know if it's great leaping ability of those long arms, because he's a big guy. Second down and three. Much more manageable if you're going to run the football with Hamilton. Ball throws to the other side this time, and it's Jeff Webb. For a first down catch after the 36. Brandon Payne on the stop for the Lobos. So they're picking on the corners here early in the first quarter. Yeah, I think the Aztecs have to do that to be successful tonight. Uh, they, they brought four guys to the left side there, picked up the blitz very well, got the ball out of their hands. Nice catch. Brandon Payne was on the coverage that far side. He's relatively new to the starting lineup, replacing Jarrell Malone, who had some troubles in that far corner. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Payne develops this season. First and ten now with a back to Hamilton. And Hamilton scoots out to the 40. Picks up four and a half. Sidney Wiley on the stop for New Mexico. Interesting formation there. They uh, lined up in a triangle formation, got up into the center and did a quick count and tried to get around the corner there. Gain a couple of yards. Hamilton 27 yards rushing tonight. He came into the game second in the conference with 700. And 19, looking to become the first freshman at San Diego State to rush for over a thousand yards since Marshall Falk, and he's well on his way. Second down and five. All again, picking on the corner again, and it's Jeff Webb with a first down. Let me tell you, to be successful against this defense, you're going to have to get the ball out of your hands, just like this. Great protection, great route, great catch, way to get upfield. Was that a mistake, though? Both those receivers were, were in such an area lined up almost identical, about seven or eight yards from each other. I don't I don't think so. It's just the both, they both ran quick hitches, and they both happened to be in the same line of sight. Webb, catching a breather. San Diego State back in New Mexico territory at the 46. Two and a half, Daniel Goronsky on the tackle. Well, tonight, the first time in 10 games that the Aztecs' opponent has scored the first points of the game. Look back to where this season began, and San Diego State looks so impressive at Ohio State. And uh, 
started three and one, but have lost the last couple. And they're trying to avoid their first 0 and 3 conference start since 1994. But they played some pretty good teams. BYU played well here, and Utah's tough to beat in Salt Lake City. Devin Pitts inside the 30 to the 29. And we're calling Wiley, Payne, Fulbright, and Golden's numbers a whole lot here in the early portions of this football game. 14 yard pickup. This is quite a chess match here. I mean, uh, San Diego State's giving them a lot of offensive looks. Rocky's giving them a lot of defensive looks. And Adam Hall's doing a great job, great composure back there, checking off to the right plays, getting the ball to the receiver's hands. First down from the 29. Hall already 98 yards passing. Goes over the middle of the field again. Was it picked off? No one's made a decision yet. Brandon Payne says it was. Well, I think the umpire made the right call. It looked like it skipped in, but, but none of the officials wanted to step in and make that call. And uh, finally, the umpire stepped up and said, no, 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 skipped right into his chest. And I think it was the right, uh, right call by the officials. Payne was thinking he had his first interception of the season. Second and 10, Aztecs still with the football. Why does it get so much more difficult once you start approaching the 20-yard line for certain teams? Well, the field is shrunk. It's, it's smaller. There's less area to cover. And with, with this defense, the pressure they create, those defensive backs don't have much, much so real estate to cover. Blitz is on. Hall steps away from it. Room to run. He lobs it. And it's complete inside the 10-yard line. And it's Jeff Webb again. Golden knocking him out, but an excellent catch by Webb. Brandon Payne made a classic mistake here on the coverage. He was beat once, but he did hustle back to get back into position. Left-hand corner up there. Payne is just kind of standing there, waiting for somebody to almost come back to him instead of going back down the field. We mentioned New Mexico being number one against the run in this conference. Well, they are dead last defending the pass. First and goal from the six. Montreal Boys run a touchdown in already. Lionel Hamilton licking his chops. The ball to the air again, and it is intercepted. Gabriel Fulbright. Ball intercepted in the end zone. Touchback. What Mexico a great ball. read by Fulbright. It was almost like he knew what play was coming, and that's a great job by the Lobo coaches to help prepare the defensive back. The Aztecs in the red zone and turned away again. So, you like the job, rookie? Next. You missed a spot. Rookie, you got some work tomorrow. Sir, are you a real fireman? He sure is. Bringing neighbors together. That's what Applebee's is all about. important messages reach out on the wireless service america trust at&t wireless doctor do you want the number 15 or the number 10 scalpel number 15 the 10's one millimeter too wide should i get an suv or a caravan caravan drives like a car it gets better gas mileage get the caravan i have an suv <laughs> <laughs> sleepy time there's no smarter choice for your family than the dodge caravan doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure that out. Now get 0% financing or up to $4,000 in cash allowances on Caravan. See your local Dodge dealer to get the best values in America. Gabriel Fulbright with his second interception of the season. It couldn't have come at a better time. Well, they had this triangle, triangle offense set up for the quick toss. Adam Hall obviously, obviously saw one-on-one -on -one coverage over there to the right. Checked off to a quick slant. But Fulbright read the route. He may have 
New Mexico may have gotten a break. It looked like he caught the ball at about the one and then went into the end zone. So, out to the 20. Ball, two interceptions in this first quarter. Now, Kelly, one aired out, and it's incomplete. Off the hands of Adrian Boyd. <laughs> Adrian Boyd is a converted running back who's doing a fine job for New Mexico as that receiver. And obviously should have caught that pass a little bit behind him there. Second down and 10. Boyd, a senior out of Flint, Michigan. He spent his first three seasons at running back. He run for, ran for 64 yards against the Aztecs a year ago, but he likes seeing more playing time receiver. Now the uh, option look again, and it's more. No room to go, and he's out of bounds. Matt McCoy ushers into the sideline to pick up of about one. Throughout the game, watch for the first down box in the upper right corner, presented by Panasonic Wireless. Right now, you can receive a $100 rebate on the GU87 wireless phone. Panasonic, ideas for life. I've been trying to figure out what New Mexico has seen offensively as far as the uh, Aztec defense and why they like to run that option. And it's not been that successful tonight, but perhaps they're setting themselves up for something later on. Lobos one of two on third down. And Kelly throws complete to Zach Cressa. But he's well short of the first down, and the Lobos will have to kick it away. Kirk Morrison, his first tackle, and the first time of many that we'll call Morrison's number tonight. Coach Tom Kraft says that Morrison's a player that comes around uh, once every blue mode. He just has that instinct, that linebacker speed, a great speed, and, and just knows where the ball is going to be. Josh, runners 11. He kicked a 53 yarder earlier. Connor lays deep. Pressure comes. Goss gets a punter's bounce. And he backs the Aztecs up to their 32. Here are some other scores from around the country presented by Dishnick. 38 yard punts are not the best effort from Goss, but it's effective. The Aztecs will have it at the 33. Utah beat UNLV in Las Vegas this afternoon. That is a final right there now. Wyoming 13 to 10. Winners at home over BYU. The Cowboy faithful will be ringing those bells tonight. Colorado State looked like a professional team the other night on Thursday. There's a team that just seemed to be getting better and better each week. As Hamilton runs into the line, maybe, maybe good for a half yard. And there's some big games looming. Air Force in Utah next Saturday. New Mexico in Salt Lake City against Utah. New Mexico's home with UNLV a bit later on. And Colorado State still has to go to Las Vegas. And they've got a date with the Lobos as well. Just a zone run up here to the right. Um, the Aztecs uh, have two new guards in there, right? We have uh, Negretti and uh, Sykes going down, so it's going to be hard to get this running game going with these two new guys in there. If they want to be successful, they're going to have to run the ball. Second and nine. Another blitz. Ball with plenty of time and a man wide open. Robert Ortiz. And flags come flying in. Looks like a busted coverage. Yes, there. Ortiz. Takes it into Lobo territory again. But the flag is nine yards upfield. It's a quick yard, five yard out there, out route. You know, it was an illegal pick. That's what it was. Well, the sad thing for set from San Diego State's perspective is they didn't need it because there was, wasn't anybody over there anyway. They're playing a soft zone behind that. They are. Here comes our explanation from Ken Flaherty. Pass in the Offense. 15 yards. Remain second down. Second penalty. Second 15-yarder against Tom Kraft's troops. Kraft in his second season, 7 and 13. Coach That's Kraft is, is probably saying, well, we designed that play that way. How come you threw the flag? This is not the start Coach Kraft wanted. First series go down 72 yards, miss the field goal. Second series intercepted for intercepted. New Mexico's fall, touchdown. And now struggling again on offense. Second and 23 after the penalty. And it's not that they haven't had big plays because they have moved the football pretty well through the air. 
Second down and long. Another blitz. Ball again with time. And another man open over the middle of the field. And Jeff Webb is off to another outstanding night. Payne on the stop. 20 more yards for Webb. Last time out on this field, 253 yards on 10 catches and three touchdowns against BYU. He's just he is something about being at home. It looks like the Aztecs are going to do it with the air tonight. I mean, that was a nice side adjustment there. Quick slant. End of the quarter. New Mexico 7, San Diego State nothing. Choir, nice to have you with us on a Saturday night in San Diego. Third down and two for the Aztecs after the big pickup by Jeff Webb. Ball again. And he throws over the head of Jermaine Moore. It'll be fourth and two. Fulbright on the coverage, and the punting team is coming on the field. Now look at the numbers through the first quarter presented by Delta Airlines. Of course, the University of New Mexico leading in as we start the second quarter, seven to nothing. And if you look at the total yards, I mean that is phenomenal. How can New Mexico possibly be leading seven to nothing? Being the total offense numbers being so different. I don't think I've ever seen it quite like that. Santoro in the punt. Dwight's wow. counter is deep. And counter isn't getting anywhere near it. And it takes a Santoro kind of bounce. Down at the four. That's some major league kick there. Santoro, a walk-on. Boots a 55-yarder. Nine yards shy of his season-high 64. But if he'd done that, the uh, Lobos would be out the 20. Well, getting back to those first-half stats, of course, the number I didn't talk about was the two turnovers that San Diego State uh, popped up to New Mexico, both interceptions. And obviously, that's the reason why New Mexico was up 7-0. Well, let's see how Casey Kelly plans to pound it out of there. This drive starting from their own four. Dontrell Moore in the backfield with a huge offensive line. And it's counter around the corner. Well defended. And he gets just a couple. Jacob Elamimian on the stop. His brother plays for Hawaii. The Elamimian brothers, pretty good defenders. This play would make me a little bit nervous running it uh, into the end zone like that. But the white counter is a veteran. He's a senior. He likes running the ball. He can do it on punt return. So I, I think the coaching staff feels comfortable with that. Second down and eight. So two on the end around by counter. Nice text blitz. More. Once he got the pitch, there was nowhere to go. And Dontrell Moore is out of bounds, shy of the eight. Running the option to the short side of the field. They've done it four times tonight. I don't know why they're doing that. See his foot go right out of bounds. Very little room. Third down and six, so he gets two. And now we have some noise from the Aztec faithful. Watch for the tight ends in a situation like this for the next go. Two tight ends set right now. Kelly, incomplete. Tried to squeeze it into the hands of Adrian Boyd, but Elamimian was all over him. And New Mexico will have to punt from their end zone. Just a quick three-step drop here. Quick slant. Oh, there might have been some uh, defensive uh, holding there. Got away with one, looks like. Kyle Connerly is deep. Tyler Goss deep in his end zone. He's averaging 46 and a half on two punts tonight. Martin Lovato is the deep snapper, and he's got a little pressure on him right at this moment. Aztecs bring pressure. A beautiful oh, punt. punt. And Connerly in the Lobo territory stopped at the 48 after a 50-yard punt from Tyler Goss. Timeout, Aztecs with the football, Lobos with the lead. Rocky Long's Lobos with the lead early here in the second quarter. 
Dodge and Sports West are teaming up to give you a chance to win a 2004 Dodge Ram truck. Go to sportswest.tv and click on the picture of the Ram truck. Get all your entry instructions and contest rules. The winner will be announced at the end of the basketball season in March. So log on tonight to sportswest.tv and enter for your chance to win a 2004 Dodge Ram from Sports West and Dodge. Grab life by the horns. First down, San Diego State from the 48. Ball right to the air, and Robert Ortiz makes an eight-yard catch, but boy, does he pay the price for it as Golden really lays him out. Golden is a, a former walk-on who has turned into one of the big playmakers for that New Mexico defense. Just a, a solid, solid football player right there, number three, out of uh, L.A. Westchester High School. He'd like to uh, own and run a nightclub someday. How about that? Well, he can come to Vegas. There's a new one there every week. And new one closed, old one closing probably. Second down and two, and Hamilton gets first down yardage inside the 40, close to the 38. Spiegel on the stop for the Lobos. At some point, and maybe they'll wait till halftime, but I, I am anticipating New Mexico's defensive staff to adjust to that quick two-step drop and fire from Adam Hall. Well, they did just there. They tightened the coverage. They had five-yard five yard cushion there rather than ten-yard cushion. They're playing some good team defense here right now. That, that, uh, the whole team was around, was around Hamilton in the last play. Close enough for a measurement. As we look at Adam Hall, two picks. Came in just three on the season. He's thrown two picks in the first half. Did Hamilton get enough? No, he did not. And it'll be third and short. So the question is, do you run the ball here with Hamilton, or do you throw the quick slant? I was surprised on first and goal from the four that they didn't run Hamilton. You know, he's got, you know, a handful of touchdowns on the season. But and they threw it and was intercepted. But here on third and one, something tells me you fake and chuck it deep. You're Dan, your former quarterback. What would you do? Would you audible whatever call came in from the huddle and you say, yeah, I'm doing my own thing? I, I quarterback sneak this thing. Third and one, I just fall over the center. His center is 300 pounds, Jesper Harvey. Third down and got a football and a half. They go to the fullback. I don't think he got it. He didn't get it. He did what what great team defense there. Dominating the line of scrimmage there. And he may have lost yardage. Pau Mele gets a rare carry. That's why I don't like the call. You, you give it to a guy in a fairly crucial situation, making his first carry of the game. You know, give it to a guy who's been there a little bit. Yeah, they're going for it. Now it's fourth down and a little bit more. They need more than a yard. So another challenge to this Lobo defense, and Hall's going to throw. Incomplete. Lonel Penman was open. And New Mexico's defense rises up again, and now the offense will get excellent field position. He had Penman open, a quick three-step drop. He seemed a little bit rushed there, a little bit hurried. Hurried to throw, and the ball uh, shortened to the outside. Thought he should have had it, it tipped. Though. Was that ball tipped? It, it fluttered like it was tipped. I didn't see a hand on it, but I thought either way, Penman should have been able to bring that one in. So the Lobos, with their best starting field position at the 40. Leading seven to nothing. And Moore off left tackle. Muscles for three before Jonathan Bales pulls him down. Second down and seven. It's just about the first time that Moore's carried the ball up the middle rather than on that option play this year. I think he has six carries now under 10 yards. Prior to this drive, the Lobos average field position of 21 yard. Ball out to the 42. Second down and about seven and a half. Little fancy pitch, but nowhere for Moore to go. Alabamian trying to strip that ball away. Moore falls forward for a pair. It brings up third down. This play has worked quite well for New Mexico this season. But it's a little bit of a misdirection, and the Aztec defense didn't bite on it at all. Look at the guys just hanging there waiting for, for Dontrell Moore to get there. Third down and five. Call it third and six. They need to get right at midfield. 
Kelly to throw it. Incomplete. It would have been a yard shy of the first down, but Adrian Boyd dropped it anyway. Boyd hit by Stephen Larson. And now the Lobos will punt it again. Casey Kelly, plenty of time here, looking across the middle, and, and it always, I think, drives fans a little bit crazy to think, well, why don't you go far enough downfield to get the first down? Because even if he had caught the ball, he would have been short. They're expecting that receiver to catch the ball coming back downhill and putting a juke on a defender and getting uphill. I do agree with it, though. I would like my receivers to get to the, to get the down marker. Tyler Goss having a pretty good night, averaging 48 yards. Punting, Kyle Connerly. Fair catch at the 21. So we'll take a break. 11.28 to play in the first half. A 35-yard punt by Goss. Aztecs with the ball trailing by seven. We met on New Mexico. 11.28 to play in the first half. After the punt, the Aztecs with the football at the 21-yard line. Adam Hall already tonight, 147 yards through the air, but he's been picked off twice. Lionel Hamilton looking to make a big play. He won't get it on his trip up the gut. Picks up two yards. Nick Spiegel on the stop. In those comparisons with Marshall Falk, Tom Kraft said, you know, the, the thing with Falk is he had that breakaway speed, those bursts, which is what Hamilton lacks. He says he's getting better on it. But where he is like Falk, according to his coaches, it was with his vision running the football. But it's hard to compare anyone to Marshall Falk. I mean, that, that, I guess that's an obvious statement, and it's probably quite unfair to Hamilton, who's just feeling his way. But he came in very highly touted. And I think that's that's probably part of the burden that he's just going to have to learn to carry. He has said he plans to break every one of Falk's records. Pass over the middle. Another completion to Jeff Webb. Fulbright beats him this time. 21 yards for Webb. There it is. They bring, bring a safety off the corner there. Number six. Adam Hall reads it perfectly. Perfect time pass. Five catches, 83 yards for Jeff Webb. That's the one thing with the New Mexico defense here. They take chances. And uh, when you take chances, sometimes you'll get burnt deep. Just to continue with the Hamilton fault comparison, Hamilton himself has said he's here to break all of his records. He has them up on his wall at home. He gets a draw, and he gets sandwiched. That's Michael Franklin. Franklin loses five yards. I think all three of the New Mexico linebackers were in the backfield that time, including Nick Spiegel. Check it out. The blitz up the middle. And a great job by that uh, defensive front as well as Spiegel uh, to get into the backfield right there. Marcus Parker was one of the defensive ends who occupied a couple of those blocks. Loss of four, second and 14 is Michael Franklin, a sophomore out of New Orleans, getting some playing time. Hall throws high, but on this night, Pitts pulls it in. Pitts and Webb having a very active first half. Pitts now with 52 yards through the air. Just playing a soft zone here. Ball, ball comes out a little bit funny. Thank goodness he's a tall receiver, huh? Six foot three. Webb is 6-2. And a couple of good targets. And they have another season ahead for Pitts. And Webb just a sophomore. Third down. Third and seven. Golden on the blitz. And Hall has to unload it early and throws incomplete. Intended for Robert Ortiz. So the chess match will continue. And Tom Kraft will send his punt team onto the field. I think both teams are going to have a hard time moving the ball consistently until they get that running game going. Neither one has been, been committed to it tonight, and I think both teams have suffered because of it. Yeah, the only points on the board, the result of a turnover at the 21-yard line. 208 total yards for San Diego State, 31 for New Mexico, but it was New Mexico with the turnover and the short touchdown run. Santoro. Kicked the beauty a short time ago. He's back out waiting at his 34. Dwight Counter is deep. 
Another one high and into the night. This one out of bounds. And we'll see where they spot it. And the Lobos will like it. Spotted at the 21. Well, it's nearly time to hit the slope. To Alta is for skiers. Right now, log on to sportswest.tv and enter to win two all-day ski passes at one of the nation's premier resorts, Alta. And there is never an empty seat on any airplane from Albuquerque or San Diego to Las Vegas. You guys notice that? You get to Las Vegas and you skip on over to Salt Lake City and you're there for a day of skiing. How about some fly fishing? You got to go a little further north. D.D. Cox into the lineup. Another option look and Kelly on the keeper. And he dances to the 25. Pickup of three. Matt McCoy on the stop. Casey Kelly, as we've mentioned, something of an adequate runner, has yet to get into the end zone uh, on the ground this season. And, and again, the Lobos deciding to go with the option play. Time ticking down in a very quick first half. Second down. Kelly backs out of the option, steps in front of trouble, and throws complete. Hank Basket. And Basket is into Aztec territory. Out at the 47. 28 yards. Jeff showed on the stop, but for Basket, that's his longest catch of the season. First time tonight that a receiver for New Mexico, I believe, has caught the ball. Hank Basket, just a sophomore. Missed much of last season after a spinal contusion, but this guy knows how to get in the air. A seven-foot high jumper, a state high school high jump champion, has managed to you know, break free there, and I think Casey Kelly did an outstanding job to go to a second or third receiver. Great feet there. Stepped up to avoid the pressure and get the ball downfield. Now they attack the middle again on the ground. D.D. Cox. Morrison credited with the tackle. I think Lobo fans have been saying this all year. Why don't you just tee it up with this offensive line and run the football at somebody rather than do the option or or the fly series? And and Rocky Long has said that he's been a little bit disappointed in this offensive line this season. But I would think uh, you know we haven't really seen these guys tee off yet. D.D. Cox started his career at Oklahoma State. They didn't want him to play running back, so. He no longer wanted to be a cowboy, and he's got two years with the Lobos. It's Cox again inside the 40, down at the 39, a couple yards shy of the first down. Brandon Rager out of Roswell, New Mexico, making the tackle for San Diego State. Rager is one that got away. Rocky Long admitted it. We just didn't think he was going to be that good. He ended up going to Sacramento State and then to San Diego State. And again, there's this, this misdirection, which I which I think is, is a good thing, but it hasn't really been set up by that straight ahead running or some successful offensive play. Well, we'll see if they've heard you from the booth. With that huge offensive line, it is third and two. Basket in motion. Cox straight ahead. And he didn't get it. He'll need a very friendly spot, but Brooke Miller would have nothing of it. And it is fourth down. I think that's the power of football that they, uh, uh, they, they want to do. Morrison. Straight up the middle, two back, two back set like that, going right up the middle. And Rocky Long is going to go for it on fourth down, and Dontrell Moore is checked back in. Moore is 214 pounds. Again, he's running behind 312, 330, 339, 320, and 330. And when you need a yard, you should be able to get it. Moore stumbles forward, and he'll be very close. Matt McCoy on the tackle. And it all depends on the spot. Dean has already decided that is short of the market. Pretty good blocking up front, and, and somebody, McCoy, just got a, a hand on the leg of Moore in the backfield and tripped him up a little bit. And that is the only reason why this is going to be close. Look at McCoy as they stretch the sticks. 15 tackles for McCoy against Utah. That's amazing. And the Aztec.
Tech defense has turned the Lobos away. Rocky Long's troops couldn't get it done. Just got a paw on Moore, who stumbled forward. I, I thought his initial reach there was going to be good enough, but obviously it, it really wasn't even that close. So the Aztecs take over at the 37. Sports West is your source for sports on the Internet. Find the latest information on schedules and upcoming telecasts. And be sure to enter to win exciting prizes, tickets, and special promotions from these featured sponsors. Log on tonight at sportswest.tv, powered by I-4 Solutions. On first down, through the air, incomplete. What a hit. Oh. Daniel Garonski separated the receiver from the ball. Jeremy Justice, tight end, getting his first taste of the football tonight. I don't know if he wants any more. Watch this hit. If you go across the middle with against New Mexico, you might face one of their outstanding linebackers. There's a good bet on it. And one thing, Dan, you know, this San Diego State receiving core is good and developing, but I don't think they're quite the level that we've seen in recent years. No, they're not. L last year they had J.R. Tolver, who's down in Miami, and they had uh, Kasim Osgood, and uh, who's playing for the Chargers right now. And these are some young guys trying to step up and play some... Big time ball here. Another young guy, Robert Ortiz, a sophomore at a Horizon High School in San Diego. He gets about six before Brandon Payne brings him down with some help from Garonski. And it'll be third down. Just a quick drag right, a drag route across the middle here to Ortiz. Trying to get upfield, avoid the defender. Look at the swarming defense here. You got five, six guys around the ball. That's what I love about this defense. They swarm. Third and three. Hall in trouble, and he's not coming out. None of that. Zach Rupp, the first to get a hold of him, and he would not let him go. Renteria in there as well, and another punt coming up from San Diego State. First sack of the night for New Mexico, and I think Nick Spiegel had a lot to do with this. Watch number 89 spin through here and turn Hall back into Zach Russ. Dwight Tanner is deep, and John Santoro back on to launch another one. This one from his 24. Counter would love to get one returnable. Santoro has picked a few beauties here in the first half. Blocked. He's to the house. And this one is house. in for a touchdown. Billy Strother, the linebacker playing special teams, picked it up and went down the sideline and scored. Hank Basket in to swat it away, and Strother scooping it up for the touchdown. Here's another look. Beautiful block. Isn't that how they teach you to do it? That's how they teach you to Just do it. Just rushed out. I talked about Basket being a seven-foot high jumper. Well, obviously, he can go out as well as he can go up. Santoro's first block punt of the season. And Zunker is on to tack on the extra point. So an interception sets up the first score and a blocked punt. Results in the second, and it's New Mexico with a 14 to nothing lead. Flag on the play as the Lobos come up with a big one over San Diego State. The big play of the second quarter is presented by Xbox Live, and here is the Xbox big play. Hank Basket blocking Santoro's punt. And Billy Struther, who blocked a punt last year against the Aztecs, scoops up the ball and takes it in for a touchdown. You saw on the sideline uh, Hank Basket there, his hair closely cropped. Well, he had his first haircut in five years right before fall camp started. He used to have a very nice afro, but he decided, hey, let's, let's get this thing shaved up a little bit. After the extra point, there was a 15-yard penalty against New Mexico, a personal foul. So the kickoff will be at the 20-yard line. 
And this should give San Diego State excellent field position again. But that hasn't been their problem, has it? They've turned the ball over too many times, and they're uh, not, not capitalizing on the great field position they've had tonight. So Zucker will just kick it away about as far as he can. Connerly and Van are at the 20, ready for the return. And it's Connerly from his 18, trying to get around the corner. A lot of white shirts there, and he's brought down at the 37. 14-yard return. Art Haynes making the stop for New Mexico. We'll see what the Aztecs do, uh, do here with four minutes left in the half. Uh, if they can go down and get some points on the board. As we mentioned earlier, the Aztecs trying to avoid their first 0-3 conference start since 1994 any more in the Mountain West that's an easy thing to do go 0 and 3 ask UNLV had a tough time it couldn't beat Utah couldn't win at Air Force well a lot of teams can't win at Air Force and next week they've got BYU a lot of parity in this group of eight first and ten and some razzle dazzle, a throwback oh my, to Adam oh Hall. Boy. He's got blockers in front of him. And Hall, who's banged up, has the first down into Lobo territory at the 47. Krishon Harris on the stop, but not before Adam Hall takes it 17 yards. It takes guts to send a guy who's being held together by glue and band aids. I mean, look at the trickery here. I mean, yeah, to, to to toss it back to Adam Hall. High ankle sprain, shoulders bruised. Get the, takes a big hit on his right throwing shoulder right there. He's got to learn to get behind those big guys. He wasn't getting up. He was outrunning them. He was outrunning them, yeah. Well, maybe a little sense of urgency now from the Aztecs, who dominated in yards the trail by two touchdowns. Ortiz, another first down as they continue to attack the corners. Ortiz knocked out of bounds inside the 35. Sydney Wiley on the top. Sorry about that, Dave. San Diego State did not score a touchdown against New Mexico last year. The only team that shut them out as far as TDs. It looked like Sydney Wiley just let him go when he needed to stay with him. And they'll spot the ball at the 34-yard line. Another first down. More yards for Adam Hall. 205 now for Hall on 16 completions. But he's thrown two completions to the other team. Hamilton trying to dart around that right side. Gets two, and he gets a whole lot of Daniel Kegler. And it'll be second down in about eight. Well, being a little bit critical of, of both coaching staffs for the way they're calling their plays there, but obviously both defenses are stacking the line of scrimmage, putting a lot of guys in the box. And Dan, you, you know, you said at halftime or, or during one of our breaks that the coaches, quarterbacks dictate what they're going to call based on the way the defense is lined up. Absolutely. Uh, tonight, Adam Hall's done a fine job of checking off. When there's too many guys in the box, he's checking off, off to quick outs to his inside receivers and quick hitches to the outside receiver. Second and eight. Hall throws incomplete. Jeff Webb was open, and that just came out all wrong from Adam Hall. I hope, I hope that was tipped. Was that tipped? I don't think it was. I... I think he just grabbed it like a baseball, never got a good grip on the laces, and threw it over there more like a shot put than a football. Adam Hall missed four and a half games with a an ankle injury, came back against BYU and had an outstanding night, struggled in the second half against the Utes, had plenty of yards, but he's lacked some big key completions. And there on third down, another bad pass. Intended for Webb, defended by Payne. And it's fourth down, and now what do you do? You, you, you have to go for it. Uh, J.C. Mejia, I don't think has, well, he does have the leg, but uh, it looks like they're going to go for it. The yeah, ball what? is resting on the 33. That would be about a 51-yard attempt there. And he has down a leg. by he two touchdowns. They've, they've gone away from the middle of the field attacking that receiver, and they've had a lot of success as someone going down and cutting over the middle. Lobos threatened blitz. Here they come. They're bringing it. They're rid of it. Over the middle of the field. First down. 
That was a great throw by Adam Hall off his back foot as the defensive uh, safety came blitzing in. Robert Ortiz beats Golden great over the middle. Up, great pickup on the offensive line here. Adam, great feet, great catch, first down. 75 yards for Ortiz, and the Aztecs are inside that red zone where the Lobo confidence just continues to rise. Can they break through it? Hamilton try to do it on the ground. And he breaks through the 15-yard line to the 14, and you just see him gang tackled. Nick Spiegel leading the way. I guess Joe Cap showed it back in the 60s that you don't have to be throw a spiral to be a successful quarterback and Adam Hall's doing a little bit of that tonight too but uh, Hamilton mixing it up here with the, the runoff tackle and, and again that gang tackle by 40 yards for Hamilton his shoulder may be bothering him tonight that, that may be part of the reason why it's coming out uh, like a wounded duck Dave you mentioned the flak jacket that he's wearing I mean you've got the pads uh, and all of that and throwing a flak jacket and that could be a problem second down and eight Ball is loose. Jason Dion, the backup tight end, jumped on it. Daniel Kegler overwhelming Adam Hall. And they maybe they're more comfortable backing outside of the 20 to run these plays because it's now at the 23. Just right up the middle. Kegler is a guy who's very active, but it was Daniel Garonski who got there first. And obviously a, fo uh, a fumble there. Uh, and I'm still not sure if, if Paul knows exactly where he was at. He was hit. Second sack of the night. 20 straight games dating back to the 2002 season opener at North Carolina State that the Lobos have had at least one sack. From the shotgun, over the middle. Jermaine Moore, first and goal at the one-yard line. They've needed two big pass plays on this drive, and they found them over the middle where they found them very early in the game. Well, they're, they're playing that, that, that two zone here, and the middle part of the zone, and a two deep zone is vulnerable. And there it is, right down the middle. Amazing what you can do when you have a nice tight spiral on the football there. Great catch. Way to hold on to it. Moore, the only Aztec from the state of Pennsylvania. He's an outstanding long jumper and high jumper in high school, and he put that ability to work. On first and goal. Hamilton, touchdown. Flag is down. The flag came from the side judge offsides, New Mexico. The touchdown will stand. And finally, somebody has scored in the Lobo red zone. And fireworks, fire from Qualcomm Stadium for the first time tonight. Hamilton showed a little bit there. It wasn't the most exciting run, but I think you could see that nice burst of speed cutting and slashing right up the middle and a good job by that Aztec uh, front five to open just enough of a seam to get into the end zone. Now Mejia, who missed a 22-yard field goal in the first quarter, but he has a much better angle here, this for the extra point. And it was helped. Blocked in there, but it's good nonetheless. And with 43 seconds to play in the first half, it is now New Mexico 14, San Diego State 7. And now the Aztecs and the crowd a little bit to cheer about. Years ago, they had a whole lot to cheer about when Dan McGuire was quarterback. Had one of his best games ever against New Mexico. Had some pretty good games in 1990 against the University of Miami. Look at that hair coming out of the, the back of the helmet. What's going on here? Look at what kind of throw is that? Touchdown. You nice you job. You like the mullet there? <laughs> <laughs> There's another fast big game. The Hurricanes got it done by two. But Dan McGuire, 528 yards of total offense against the Lobos in 1990, which remains a San Diego State school record. There's no way. There's yep. no way he can't be. Checked it. You know, on that last Billy highlight, Blair. on that last highlight, with your blazing speed, why did you <laughs> run that? In? My 5'5 speed blazing down there. 
240 pounds? Yeah, right. <laughs> when you're 6'10", it's tough to dodge the defenders, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a big target. That was a key series for the Aztecs there. They really needed points on the board. Don't try to change the subject here. We want, we want to go back to your foot speed. <laughs> no, you're right. That was obviously huge right before half. Mejia kicks it short. Fair catch called for at the 31, rather the 21-yard line. And that's Basket. He's, he's been around the football all night tonight. Now they're kicking it to him. There's a flag down way back at the Aztec. I call it line of scrimmage where they were kicking off, and they may have jumped the gun offside if that's the case. Let's see what Rocky Long decides to do. He could make him re-kick, or he could just decline it with 43 seconds left. Yes. Kicking, team. kicking team, five-yard five yard penalty, re-kick. Re no re-kick. Lobos with some speed in the return game, and why not give him a shot? Just a pooch kick here, and this is a... Uh, this is a wise decision. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's the offside up there. But you know what? I think they can call that on almost every kickoff. But but clearly, you could see the Aztec player maybe a yard ahead down the field. So now they'll spot the ball at the 30. Radcliffe and Frazier are the deep men for New Mexico. But you've got to figure if they pooched the one a moment ago, they'll do that here. And there's a lot of yards between the initial group of the Lobos there's about 20 yards between the two wave of players and you pop it in there and catch it catch a loose ball here comes Mejia this one short and high picked up at the 20 by Radcliffe you see he's got plenty of speed as well trying to get around the corner it's up to the 44 field position for the Lobos with 36 seconds left that was just a bad kick because it wasn't uh, long enough to, to, to really boom it. What I'm saying, it was right in the middle where they had a chance to not only catch the ball and run it, uh, but, but get good yardage off it. I'm, I'm explaining it terribly. But if you're going to pooch it, you did a great job. Exactly. If you're going to pooch it, just do it and call a fair catch. Make it out for a catch, exactly. Look at the scoring drive. First touchdown, the Lobo defense is allowed, and the, his opponent's last five trips inside that red zone over the past three games. Some time to work. Kelly from the pocket throws right at midfield. Adrian Boyd. Two yards shy of the first down, so the clock will continue. Kirk Morrison, who has yet to really make a big play in this first time time out. on the stop. The Lobos take a timeout. First charge team timeout. They play the zone coverage back there, and uh, Casey gets his check down. Probably his third or fourth option on, on that one. It's probably his third or fourth, fourth option. You, know, you could see Casey Kelly bounce around a lot in the pocket like that. Is, is that just a, 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 I mean, is that a good that, thing that, or is that not a good thing? That's just his style. Every quarterback's different. His style is to bounce around, be light on his feet, see the field. If nothing's open to the right, come back to the middle, to the left. And that last play was indicative of what he just did. Rocky Long talked with us earlier about his tailback, Don Trell Moore. Here's what he had to say. Uh, we expect the same thing out of him. You know, I, I hope he gets better, and I hope he uh, learns to hold on to the ball a little bit better than he did last year as a rookie. Uh, he had some injury problems last year as a rookie, and I think where, where our strength is now is we do have Don Trell. But we feel real confident we have some two or three other young running backs in the program with, that we think can spell Dontrell. Or if Dontrell's having trouble with injuries, we got uh, adequate backup where maybe we didn't last year. Rocky Long from our infrared interview. Very top secret when Sports West sits down with a coach. <laughs> Second and two, as you see, Moore. He is out because the receiving core is in. 26 seconds left in the half. Still a lot of work to do to get in the range of Zunker. Blitz is on. Kelly. Guy open down. Wow. Throws complete. Great catch. Inside the 25-yard line. Dwight counter. And now they are in field goal range. Now they're in touchdown range. They're 21 seconds. 25 yards. Design on the reception. Design rollout here. Looks at, looks at the guy on the flat to hold the safety. Hold the corner over the top. 
Great catch. The Lobos have not had very much offense at all in this first half. And look at Tally. that seam right there. See the seam right there? Jeff Schott almost got to the ball. First down from the 25 for New Mexico. 21 seconds to play in the half. Kelly now with time to throw. Drops it off to Moore inside the 20. Flags come out. Moore inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Flags are out at the 20. I wonder if we'll have a, a, an offensive lineman downfield on that. Pretty good chance there was. We see a lot of holds on those plays. Usually it's those big guys trying to get downfield to block for their back. Holding is the call against oh. New Mexico. Correct me, I'm wrong. It could have been that. Why do you need to hold when you're throwing a screen? Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Ten yards from the spot of the hole. Still first down. That's a tough penalty because it will back up the New Mexico line of scrimmage to the 31. Add five and ten more for field goal, and you're talking about a 47-yarder. That looked like I don't a pretty good it. play by Claude Terrell, number 76. I did not see holding at all. Timeout. Time out. New Mexico. New Mexico. Second charge team timeout. 11 seconds on the scoreboard clock, and we'll keep it right here as they plot out a plan. 11 seconds. You got at least one shot at the end zone, don't you? Maybe two. You, you, you go you, quick. You have you have two plays here. If you go to the end zone, you have two plays here. If you're going to do something quick, quick outs or quick slants, you can get three plays possibly in. Well, I think New Mexico might be just thinking, get the ball 10 or 15 yards more downfield, get your field goal kicker, Wes Bunker, in a position where he has a reasonable chance of making it. Yeah, they want they want to go to halftime, you know, ahead 17-7 here. They want, they want something out of this drive here. Wes Sunker has only attempted four field goals all season. They just haven't just haven't used him. He's three of four. You go across the line to Mejia, who has attempted 17. Well, part of that is San Diego State has not been effective in the red zone, and New Mexico has. Exactly. So 11 seconds on the scoreboard clock. And the plotting continues. Doesn't Casey Kelly look like just a little kid in that helmet in there? He's a senior, former walk-on out of Portland, and uh, taking a little bit of heat this year as, as far as his performance, but Rocky Long just, just likes the way he runs this team. Long says he gives him the best chance to win, and that's why he's in there. First down after the penalty. Time is the enemy. Kelly pumps, goes to the end zone, incomplete right there at the goal line. Five seconds remaining with Sean Sanders, the intended receiver. He was open, Jacob Elamimian, the closest defender. Sanders has really improved as a receiver, a terrific athlete who, who played the position more as an athlete than a, than a guy who, who studied the position, learned the right routes. His hands have improved, although that one, obviously a tough catch, but maybe he could have hauled that one. 38, 48-yard attempt coming from Wes Zunker. His longest is 43. And he's got it. What a kick, huh? A season high for Wes Zunker. And the half ends on his foot. And New Mexico, a block punt. They cash in on an interception. And Zunker with a 48-yard field goal. The Lobos lead it 17 to 7 at halftime. Time of possession, 1941 to 1019. The Aztecs are controlling the game, but they're losing on the scoreboard. That's the game of football when you make mistakes. Let's look at some first-half highlights. And speaking of mistakes, threatening at the four-yard line, Fulbright picks off Hall, turns San Diego State away. And this is after a missed 22-yard field goal. Then on the other end of the field, Hall in trouble, picked off, sets up a score from Moore, and it's first touchdown of the game. Well, New Mexico coming right back, converting that touchdown in, or interception into the touchdown with Dontrell Moore. And so far, up to that point, they had done almost nothing offensively, but had taken the lead. Basket blocks the punt, scooped up by Struthers, and he takes it in for a touchdown. 
And it was 14 to nothing, New Mexico, at this point. And during key seg segments of this game, they have been able to get pressure on home. They have. They, they brought five, six guys where they can't protect them. As a quarterback, you don't like to get hit, and they're getting to Adam Hall. Then again, Adam Hall is thrown for a lot of yards, 255 yards. The problem is they're not getting in the end zone. Devin Pitts and Jeff Webb with big first halves. Getting down near that 20-yard line, the dreaded area against these Lobos. And Hamilton just clawing for runs here and there. He does have the Aztecs' only touchdown. Getting what he can. And they, too, have put pressure on Casey Kelly. Kelly doing a decent job in the first half of, you know, making the right calls and not making the mistakes. And it's an interesting play. Did they ever do this for you, Dan, when you were playing? Uh, they, they might have done it once. And I uh, might have gained two yards. But, uh, no, I'm not that big sprinter. Spring type. There's Hamilton diving in for the Aztecs' only touchdown. And that puts us at 17-7 to on the scoreboard here at halftime. When we come back to San Diego, we'll visit with Mike Vaughn, the new athletic director at San Diego State, as the Mountain West heads into a very intriguing time of expansion. See you in a minute. And get lean? Want to shed inches and get chiseled abs? Want to get into the best shape of your life and do it in as little as 20 minutes a day and only three days a week? Well, now you can on the Crossbow by Weeder. Only the Crossbow features the five most important aspects critical to an effective strength training program. One, hardcore resistance. The Crossbow's exclusive compound resistance system actually harnesses the power of these bows, allowing you to do multiple repetitions for developing long, lean, shapely muscles. Two, range of motion. Through advanced engineering and its cable and pulley system, when the crossbow compounds one foot, the cable releases two, giving you complete range of motion, allowing your muscles to peak with every exercise. Three, quick change resistance. Because of the crossbow's breakthrough design, changing resistance is as simple as slipping the ends of the bows under the collar. Going quickly from one exercise to the next allows you to burn more calories by keeping your heart rate up. Four, total body workout. The crossbow comes fully loaded with 240 pounds of muscle building resistance. A lap tower for shoulder and back exercises. A leg developer for sculpting the lower body. An adjustable bench for multiple chest and arm exercises. As well as a complete cardio row feature that burns calories while you build muscle. Five, value. The crossbow delivers over 65 club quality exercises and space saver design, all for less than half the cost of other home gyms. Call now and put the crossbow in your home for zero down and as little as $35 a month. Along with your crossbow, you'll also receive this workout video and wall chart. It's everything you need to begin a safe, balanced, productive fitness program. Only the crossbow features all five critical aspects to an effective cardio and strength training workout. Call now. Halftime continues. Homecoming at San Diego State. New Mexico in the lead, 17 to 7. We welcome Mike Bond up to the booth upstairs at Qualcomm Stadium. This is now your new football stadium, and hey, this is a nice place to work. It certainly is. It's kind of nice and cozy out here, isn't it? Yesterday, your first day in the office, you, you, you found a place to live and, and all that stuff? No, we really haven't. Being in the first day, I'm just trying to adjust to the weather. Some people figure, well, you don't need this sweater vest out <laughs> here in, uh, in Southern California and certainly uh, a lot different than Northern Idaho. But uh, it's, a, it's really an exciting time and really feel like it's an honor and a pleasure to be here and really looking forward to the challenge. Well, you come in a very important time in this conference and uh, the Mexico fans, as they listen in, as see your face for the first time, knowing that you work for San Diego State. But as athletic athletic directors now you're all working toward what's best for the Mountain West is expansion best for the Mountain West well I'll tell you what it, it's certainly great to be in a great conference with a great commissioner I spent eight years at the Air Force Academy I spent three years at Colorado State had an opportunity to come and be in this stadium a couple times in the Holiday Bowl with the, with Colorado State so it's it's kind of like home coming in a lot of ways and, and it's great to be a part of uh, 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 of athletic directors in a conference that really recognizes that they can move to the next level potentially with all that's going on with the with the uh, changes and the BCS schedule and the BCS timeline and what's coming on. So it certainly will be a challenge, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a great group. Now, some of the rumors that are out there, and, and Conference USA is already talking to SMU as they expect to be rated by the Big East. They'll come and take a few teams from the WAC. 
Mountain West, you want TCU in? Is that is it one team you guys want to add or uh, or more or, well, or none at all? Well, I, I'm a Western guy. I'd like to think that that's if in the event the presidents choose to go to the West, that I'd like to see that's where they go. But uh, obviously, it's uh, right now about for me trying to ensure that San Diego State's a viable program and, and one that uh, has more people in the seats and a little bit more excitement around our program to the point where the league and the conference and, and as an ind individual institution represents itself as a as a viable BCS member potentially and I think that's where my focus is and I think that's where the focus of the majority of the athletic directors are in the conference It'll be interesting to see what Tom Kraft can get done with your football team and as you go over to basketball first practice here this week actually today I guess and, and Steve Fisher that's not a bad guy to have on your group no it? <laughs> it's really a pleasure to be here with some great conference uh, excuse me some great coaches obviously Tony Gwynn in baseball and I went by practice today and spent some time with coach Fisher and, and he is really a, a fine gentleman and a professional and really looking forward to working with him and everybody really hey this is a good football conference but basketball is uh, is something special there Mike thank you very much no. and good luck with your new assignment all right thank you very much appreciate you being here athletic director at San Diego State 17 to 7 New Mexico and we'll be back with the start of the second half in a moment bending twisting turning moving after a while it takes a toll on your back you don't have to live with back pain introducing the complete back therapist CBT 5000 for just 15 minutes a day this revolutionary device can help eliminate lower back pain increase strength and improve flexibility as a practicing orthopedic surgeon I've seen thousands of patients with low back pain that's why I help create the back therapist this product will help you develop a strong and healthy back the CBT 5000 is easy to hook up and use right away all you need is a door and a floor it's physical therapy without the therapist Ten years ago, I was in so much back pain that I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. I started doing these exercises, and in two days, I could really tell a difference. And in two weeks, I was totally pain-free. And that was four years ago. Call now for the introductory offer of $69.95 plus shipping and handling. Feel results or return it for a complete refund. Call now and receive the lumbar support absolutely free. So, do you like the job, rookie? Next. You missed a spot. <laughs> <laughs> rookie, you got some work tomorrow. You sure are you a real farmer? He sure is. Bringing neighbors together. Nice to That's you. what Applebee's is all about. can make learning fun. A message from the Mountain West Conference, a sponsor of educational software for kids. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you by Delta. Now Sky Miles members can check in from their Homer office on Delta.com. Your Lexus dealer and the new 2004 LS, the ultimate expression of their passionate pursuit. NordicTrack.com. Life's an adventure. Get ready for it online. And by AT&T Wireless. Reach out on a wireless service America trusts. And Nokia. Connecting people. 17-7 to 7, New Mexico. And the Lobos will get the football to start the third quarter. Now look at the quarterback efficiency in the first half. Brought to you by Palm at Franklin Covey. Check out all the new Palm handheld devices at Franklin Covey stores or by visiting franklincovey.com slash free. Got Casey Kelly, 5 of 10, 71 yards. Not a whole lot going on there, but they're, they're winning 17-7. You got Adam Hall, great numbers, 18 of 30 for 238. The problem is the two INTs. But the Aztecs get back in this, they can't turn the ball over. Frazier takes the kickoff a yard deep. And he's looking for a lane. Runs out of room up the sideline. Knocked out of bounds out to the 29. Adjustment wise, what do you expect from the New Mexico offense? They haven't told us a whole lot. They haven't had a whole lot of plays out there. Uh, I would like to see them do some more, uh, more of a power running game, get that going, take some time off the clock, and do some high percentage passes with Casey Kelly. 
Kelly, 71 yards, three for just 70 last year against this defense. This Aztec defense ranked number one in the conference, one of the big surprises in the Mountain West this season. Kelly wanted to go deep. Nobody's open, and he's cut down, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Loses a yard, and it'll be second down and 11. A couple of late flags flew in well after the play had ended. Uh, something to do with the receiver and a DB for uh, the two teams out there. This was a play action fake here and just a one receiver route in the uh, Aztec defense. Read it well. Two guys to one receiver. Can't throw it, tuck it, and run. Josh Dean made the tackle. Now we're going to have an explanation on the laundry. Well, it'll be a personal foul against New Mexico. I believe it was Hank Baskin downfield. Perhaps a late block. Dead ball. Dead ball. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Second half. Now this is just what New Mexico does not want to do. Unfortunate penalties like this. They want, they want to move the ball in the other direction. They can't afford this because their offense has been pretty stagnant today. When San Diego State was pinned back like this, it's what led to the interception, which led to the game's first touchdown. Let's see how Casey Kelly handles it on second down. Moore spins away as into the secondary. They go, one guy to beat. Dontrell Moore cuts back inside. What a run. Ella finally pulls it down, but not before he gets 46 yards. Into Aztec territory. Well, this is a terrific effort by Dontrell Moore, but it's flat out bad tackling by San Diego State. He should be down right there, down there again. Instead, he kept going. And give Adrian Boyd some credit downfield. Now, this wasn't a very good block here, but he kept his man occupied. He made the tackle. <laughs> Adrian Boyd, they're back in the huddle with him. Dontrell's going, hey, nice tackle, Adrian. Moore, 58 yards on the ground, most of them on that carry. Now an option run. And again, the tailback went the wrong way, and Kelly keeps it wrapped up by Stephen Larson. D.D. Cox that time, the last time it was Dontrell Moore that went the wrong way. So I don't know whether they're putting in a, a, a slight variance to this play or what, but I, I hadn't seen this all season. Five yards on that play, second and five with the 37. Kelly gets five the hard way, second and five, ball on the 37. So our first chance to see Dontrell Moore in the open field, and it was an impressive run. Moore back in there, looking for room. Around the left side, he's running with confidence, and he has a first down inside the 32, depending on the spot. If he didn't get the first down, he's very close to it. First down. One thing Dontrell Moore does as well as any running back in the Mountain West Conference is he makes that first tackler in the open field miss. He, he has that great little juke. Usually he goes to the left and back to the right, and that's what he did to help him break free from the line of scrimmage. Nine carries the last two games. He's had 30 each. First down, New Mexico. Kelly again. Nothing there. Falls forward for about a half of a yard. Seeing a lot of the option look from Casey Kelly. Former walk-on, one of many who walked onto this Lobo program. Probably more options than Casey Kelly would like to see, to be honest. Kelly, 13 yards on seven rushes. Matt McCoy is down and being attended to by the outstanding sophomores on this Aztec defense. We will take a timeout as they attend to McCoy. 12.41 to go here in the third quarter. The Lobos are on the move and leading 17-7. to 7. Media messaging only from AT&T Wireless. Ready to go? Oh, yeah. Say it, shoot it, send it. The new photo phone from Panasonic. Ideas for life.
rates, great cars, locations throughout the western U.S. and select airports around the world. Just choose the Advantage you like best. Advantage Rent-A-Car. For great deals, call or log on today. We'll even pick you up. Lobos, five plays on this drive. 45-yard run, the highlight by Moore, his longest as a Lobo. And it is second down and nine. The ball at the 31. Let's see if they keep feeding the workhorse. Moore spins inside the 30, down at the 29. Kirk Morrison. Up leading the way defensively. Here's some other scores from around the country presented by Dish Net. It's all in the dish. That's a shocker there, isn't it? BYU's got big problems. They go to Las Vegas next week, and uh, they're not going to find the answers against UNLV's defense. UNLV coming off a home loss to Utah today. Third down. The Lobos need seven. Blitz is on. Pocket holds up. Kelly wants six. Counter first down. At the three-yard line. And he beat Jacob Elamimian. 26 yards on the play. If Kelly had put a little more air under this one, I think they would have been six. Going to the house. First and goal, New Mexico. I think that's what Counter wanted. A little little more in the air, he would have had a chance to race under it in the end zone. As it is, they've got a first down inside the five. Dontrell Moore time. Kelly now 6 of 11, 97 yards. Yeah, guess who the ball's going to? Dontrell Moore. First and goal, Lobos. Ball on the three-yard line. Kelly. To Moore. Touchdown. That's 11 on the season for Don Trell Moore. This might very well have been a check at the line of scrimmage by Casey Kelly because San Diego State had 10 players in the box and they were not going to be able to run it up the middle. It looks like they were going to run up the middle. He checked off to the option there, which turned out to be uh, six points. And that is one of the things that this Lobo coaching staff, Dan Dodd, the offensive coordinator, really like about Casey Kelly. He gets them into the right play. Wes Unker is on to attempt the extra point. And he knocks it through. 11.27 to go. An impressive way to start the third quarter, especially after the penalty early in the drive. And on this drive, Moore, six carries, 58 yards. And the last couple get him his second touchdown of the night. There's no containment there. There's no one upfield in their face. That's it. I could run that one in. <laughs> Adrian Bird kind of helped, kind of helped him in there. Yeah, when you got when you got 10 guys in the box, you got a receiver out wide. Watch the they'll push in. Good blocking by the receiver downfield there. Dontrell Moore in double digits now as far as a touchdowns this season. So much for me saying stagnant offense. I think the, the Lobos uh, proved here they can run the ball. 73 yards on the drive, 45 of it. And that big run by Moore, eight plays. He's got two touchdowns. And now the Aztecs are in a fix down 24 to 7 and needing a quick strike. And technically that was even longer than a 73 yard drive because didn't that penalty take him back inside the 10 for a while there? Yes, it did. Impressive. This Lobo defense has been nearly unbeatable in the second half in the last couple of games. Man after the wobble. He was swarmed under. Great coverage downfield. Miller Great Strother coverage. leading the pursuit. And the Aztecs will start a bit of a hole. Right at their 15-yard line. It seems that it looks like he held his hands the wrong way there, didn't it, on the, on the uh, attempted catch. But it seems like you start to lose faith in, in yourself when things go badly. And even a, a simple kickoff return like that might have been a case of the point. 
It was exactly there, and we all, they had they had two guys that were untouched going downfield. Special team problem, it looks like. Adam Hall and company ready to go to work from their own 15-yard line. Hamilton in the backfield. More in motion. Moore's got it. A couple of blockers, but they cannot contain New Mexico. Brandon Payne leading on the defense. Tackle made by Brandon Payne. Couple of helmet fobs there. These Lobos in the second half in the last three games, their defense has allowed just one field goal. And the Aztecs need much more than that. Paul throws behind. Wow, what a catch. Devin Pitts, and somehow Pitts pulls that in across the 20 to the 21. Paul has, has, has been okay tonight, but he just seems to be maybe just a little bit off. We've seen a couple of his passes flutter a little bit behind his receivers, and, and again, that may be missing those four and a half. It might be that. It might also be his uh, shoulder injury. We won't know that. Uh, you know, he's, he's thrown a few balls over the top of guys' heads, a few balls in the dirt, but, uh, you know, he's thrown for a lot of yards. He's moved the team down the field, but once again, have not got it. Got it from the red zone into the end zone. Third and four. Late blitz. Throw over the middle. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Jeremy Justice. And he's had a drop or two as well. That one should have been called in. A punting team coming back on. And you almost get the sense that a score here from New Mexico could put this one out of reach pretty early. Yeah, as a quarterback, you know, having your receivers drop balls downfield that are in their hands for a first down. It's hard at times. Santoro back out. The last punt was blocked and taken in for a touchdown. So he's got to be a little bit on edge, standing at a six-yard line. Dwight counter is deep. Santoro, this one returnable. Counter at the 42. No return at all. Ball hung up at counter. I couldn't quite decide to call a fair catch or catch it and take a beating. He chose the beating, but it's good field position. 37-yard punt. Lobos with the ball when we come back. Back 24-7. New Mexico with the lead. And the Lobos with the ball at the 42. New Mexico's come out and taken charge of this football game here in the early minutes of the third quarter. On first down, Adrian Bird gets a rare carry up the middle for seven. Right now, get 50% off planning software. You purchase any handheld device at Franklin Bird Covey. Bird just his 15th carry this season. And he picks up five. It'll be second down and five. Still waiting for that deep ball for the Lobos. They've pounded it away here to start the second half. Now we may wait a while before we see that deep ball if they're able to put the ball on the ground. Obviously, they're seeing that big lead. The end around, Razzle Dazzle, and it is intercepted. Adrian Boyd would love to have that throw back, picked out by Josh Dean. And Adrian Boyd was looking for the deep ball, and it came back to bite him. I think this was uh, Terrence Thomas with the throw number 81. You're right. And obviously, the Lobos going for the juggler there, and Boyd was the intended receiver, just threw it short. Thomas threw a 21-yard touchdown at Casey Kelly against Washington State, so he has done it before. An outstanding catch by Josh Dean, and just what the Aztecs needed to try and get back in this football game. Does that play surprise you at all? It, it does. Well, why do trickery when uh, the Lobos, the last series, ran the ball down the field? Looks like they're wearing down the defensive lineman here this series, and they pulled this uh, cat out of the bag, and it, uh, it came back and bit him. We'll see what Adam Hall can do to cash in on the mistake. First turnover of the night for New Mexico. And over the middle of the field again is Ortiz. Gets eight. Tackled by Spiegel. 
And sets up second and short. Ortiz has been the best receiver, I think, for San Diego State tonight. He's been able to find the seams, find a spot. Usually it's 10, 15 yards downfield. That's about it. But he's done a nice job. Eight catches, 77 yards for Ortiz. Lobos stay home next week to take on Wyoming. New Mexico hits the road again, plays at Utah. Hamilton, there's nothing around the corner for Hamilton. Golden and company hit him. Look at that team speed defense there. Swarming defense like a bunch of killer bees. The ball popped out late, but the Aztecs retained possession. Watch, I don't know if you can see it on the replay, how quickly Terrell Golden came up, number three. He just he fired up after he saw the handoff. You can't get around that. So a loss of about six. Is SDSU becoming one-dimensional here? Do we have to rely on the pass? Where they're facing the best run defense in the Mountain West. And just not had much luck against us. Tonight. Third and seven. All will work from the shotgun. Another blitz coming. Hall intercepted. Nick Spiegel. And look at Spiegel go. Spiegel had a season high nine tackles against the Aztecs last year. And he comes up with his first interception of this season with a pretty nice run back. This is where the Lobos are so successful. They bring guys to the line of scrimmage. They bring six guys. They can't protect it. It looks like a hot. They drop their defense alignment and linebackers out. Adam gets rid of the ball, unfortunately, into Spiegel's hands. I, could... I don't think Dontrell Moore has to worry about Spiegel taking his position, though. 6-6, <laughs> six, six, his parents flew out from Albuquerque to watch the game tonight. 20-yard return. Lobos with the ball at the 20. See, they're wearing them down up front. They can do this the rest of the night. They're Bird. wearing them down. Bird going straight yeah, ahead. Hey, Spiegel can play some tight end with those hands and the ability to break it loose downfield. Yeah, that's one That's one tough thing as a quarterback is you see six, seven guys coming. You go into your hot receiver, and they drop three of the six or seven out, and, and you're committed to throwing hot. And that's what Adam Hall got stuck into, and he unfortunately threw an interception. Well, the Lobo defense just came back and shut the door down after that turnover, and got to give them a lot of credit. Adam Hall getting his left hand attended to. Second down and four. Right back to the big fullback. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard. Ball Maybe Rocky Long has put that bag of tricks away. Bales and McCoy. Going to see McCoy back in there. Those two in on the tackle. Here's a look at number 64 for New Mexico. Justin Colbert. This is his last night as a single man. Tomorrow he gets married in Albuquerque, and he'll be marrying Marcy Leninger, who will come down from Colorado. He's a young man from Westminster, Colorado. And, and they were going to get married in Colorado tomorrow. He was going to fly out, but they changed some plans, and they're getting married and lose that nothing but the best. Quite a story with Colburn. Overcome a lot of off-the-field struggles. Big defensive stop by Ryan Ayata. And that may force the field goal unit coming on on third and short. Instead of pounding right up the gut, they try to go to the outside. And Ayata wrapped up Casey Kelly. Zunker is on to attempt a field goal. Boy, what a big defensive stop right there. Huge play for the Aztecs. And to really to stay in the game, I think. 33-yard attempt. He had a 48-yarder at the end of the second quarter. And Zunker, who hasn't kicked a whole lot this season, is two for two tonight. Six minutes remaining in the third quarter. And it's now 27 to 7. The big play of the quarter is presented by Xbox Live. And here's the Xbox big play. And it's Big Spiegel. Now the catch was one thing. Look at the run. Looks like he ran the ball. Look at that. He's looking like a big old gazelle out there. Huh? I think Spiegel's going to be insulted by, <laughs> by that comparison. 
long rangy guy. That's where the comparison ends. Yes, that's, and that's where it, that's where it ends. So another kickoff coming from Zunker. And the Lobos have come out and scored 10 quick points here in the third quarter. We talk about their defense not giving up but a field goal in the last few football games. It, it, it almost seems impossible that they give up 20 points. But this is a crazy game. Van thought about it, puts his knee down. A wise decision. Lobos went through quite a drought in their series with San Diego State, especially at home. They, they just could not find a win against the Aztecs. They were close games over a span of going back to when Dan played, uh, but they just couldn't win. And now all of a sudden, whatever the reason is, they've been able to put together three wins and maybe four in a row. And they're looking for their third straight here at Qualcomm Stadium. The Lobos, first time, what, second time in school history, they had seven home games, some big conference games at home coming up. I think that's why Rocky Long's still confident they've got a shot at it. Hamilton, his first real burst through the line. Picks up seven. Daniel Garonski, second on the team in tackles for New Mexico, making another stump. Daniel Great and angle the right there. Hamilton up the middle and a huge hole that, that was opened up by the San Diego State Aztec front uh, front line. 41 yards on 14 carries for Hamilton. And they'll give it right back to him. Try and move the sticks. He gets across the 30. Enough for a first down. A lot of times, these kind of situations, teams that are down on the scoreboard, they just want to go out and get their stuff back, get their identity back by, by running the football, getting some first downs, especially when nothing's working for them. Well, it's almost backwards from what you should do at this point. You might think about throwing the ball downfield, being down by a score of 27-7, uh, but again, you, you have to have at least a little bit of balance. You do. Absolutely. And it looks like they're going to go do a... Well, time out here, obviously. Adam Hall. Timeout. San Diego State. He's short of position player. Time calls out. a timeout. Moves to the sideline with 4.56 to play in this third quarter. We'll take a break with him. 27-7, New Mexico. Adam Hall, who's a moment ago, we saw him getting some work done on that left hand. I think that's his good hand. Yeah, you throw with your right hand, but I mean, the guy's banged up. He's got a bad right shoulder, bum left hand, high ankle sprain coming back from. The guy's just a warrior being out there. But now this series here is gonna test the character of the Aztecs here. They're down 27-7, need to get back in this ball game. What can they do? And you think of character, and Lobos have put 20 points on the board, all from the Aztec mistakes tonight, and that's your difference, 27 to seven. First down and 10. Ball at the 31. Adam Hall moving into the top 10 in total offense in school history. Pass was forward. So it'll go as an incomplete pass as he tried to get it to Hamilton. Of course, Dan McGuire is third all time. No, really? Yeah. I'm kidding. Wouldn't kid about those things. Hamilton has been pretty good out of the backfield catching the ball, but he took his eye off this one apparently. And a little bit behind him again, but he needs to make that play because he did have some room, uh, room to run. Across the way, Casey Kelly. To win tonight will move him into a tie for second for most wins as a New Mexico quarterback. 15. His coach, Rocky Long, holds the record at 16, so this will probably be Kelly's last start. <laughs> Pass complete. Out of bounds. Set up third and short. Sidney Wiley knocks him out. Great protection up front. The, the, once again, it looks like they're bringing six, seven guys here. They drop three out. Slot guy does a quick out route. Good pass, good catch. Pretty good hands right there. Ortiz continuing his impressive night. 
these two head coaches, two of the 20 Division I coaches coaching their alma maters, and these two are quarterbacks for their respective teams. So why are they so good on defense? Both of them. Well, Rocky ended up playing in the Canadian Football League on the defensive side. Call. Wow, what a throw. throw. What a throw. Devin Pitts into Lobo territory. 20 yards and a first down at the 44. How much, does, how much does Pitts weigh anyway? 195. Boy, he doesn't look that heavy, does he? What a great post route. Set up the uh, defensive back with an outside move. Brought it back inside. Ryan the same. Great pass. Great catch. Ball now up to 269 yards through the air. Devin Pitts ready to go again. Blitz is on. Quick release. And it's Ortiz. Is he going to get up? Eight yards. Paul staggers to his feet. I don't miss those hits oh, anymore. Man, oh man. Backside Nick Spiegel. And I've always maintained, I'm not sucking up to you, Dan, that the toughest player in the football field is a quarterback. Thank you. You're vulnerable. You're getting hit right in the back, right in the shoulder. You have to, you have to be a leader. Brian, right now, but by golly, he's back up to the line. He's biting his tongue right now. Franklin in a tailback. Oh, ball kicked around and almost picked off. Try that little receiver screen to Devin Pitts, and just about turned into a nightmare. That receiver screen has been money in the bank for San Diego State for 10 years against New Mexico. They've won games on that play, and tonight New Mexico has not let them get off the mark on it. That's a, he had a seam there. He just didn't catch the ball. He took his eye off the ball. That's a linebacker's dream. They just <laughs> close to we'll reset the ball. Third and two. Everybody going out for a pass. Webb in motion. Ortiz took his eye off the ball, but he's going to get a helpful hand here. 15 yards penalty. Goronsky nailed him after the play, right in front of the official. And did you see Terrell Golden, the captain, number three, immediately get in Goronsky's face and let him know what he thought of it? There's the penalty right there. And it really wasn't Garotsky, was it? DJ Renteria. Yeah. Garotsky in the area, but it's Renteria. Ball, ball, virtual foul. Defense, unnecessary roughness, 15 yards, automatic first down. That's the third one tonight, the personal foul penalty. New Mexico has had a tendency to make those this year, and it hasn't cost them a game, but eventually it comes back to haunt you. Fourth penalty in the game. Renneria senior. Hit with the late hit. So the ball's resting just inside the 21 for San Diego State. And instead of fourth and two, they've got a new set of downs. Hall to the corner. Has a beat. Incomplete. Intended for Webb. Payne on the coverage for the Lobos. Great pump fake here by Adam Hall. Payne bit on it just to get the ball to the corner of the end zone. Take another look. There's the Great pump fake. Yeah. See him bite, comes up on it. Perfect, perfect route. Just needs to get the ball to the corner. Just a little bit short. This next pass will be the 40th of the night from Adam Hall. He strode 60 in the game. That is a lot. That's why he's here. Paul. He wants to throw the ball. Well, if you're if you showcase the quarterback, if you're a quarterback, you want to come here. You want to come San Diego State. You want the receiver, San Diego State. And running back, San Diego State. Marshall Falk is. What about the center? What if you want to be a center? USC. <laughs> and it's the same with New Mexico now. Kids want to come to play that style of defense. That's why he's been able to get a, a better athlete and a faster athlete. 
Third down and three. Well, Brian Erlocker set quite a standard, and NFL scouts will go, where did he come from? Let's keep an eye on those guys. Third and three, blitz is on. Hall to the end zone. Knocked away. Great defensive play there. Well wow. defended by Brandon Payne. Intended for West. Well, that's why he's earned a spot in the starting lineup when he started on the bench this year. Just looking up at the last second, getting both hands on it. Possible interception there, but the main thing was to knock it down. Fourth down, and the Aztecs down by 20 will go for it. They need to get, get a first down. They need to get inside the 11, so about two and a half, and they'll run it. Nothing there. The wow. number one defense against the run was waiting for him. And the Bluebirds come out. Zach Rupp and friends wrap up Hamilton. And the Lobos take over. Well, it looked like a Brian Erlacher hit there almost. He had a few good games in this stadium. Brian Erlacher, one of the all-time greats, if not the greatest defensive player from New Mexico and he's had a hand in the big plays in this series and this one right here turned into the game winning touchdown on October 9th 1999 and it's a 24 21 New Mexico victory on the other side of the ball Kirk Morrison is getting some comparisons to Erlocker skill wise right counter the ball comes loose Right at the 15-yard line, and the Aztecs have it. Huge play for the Aztec defense. Second turnover of this quarter for New Mexico. Reggie Grigsby. The hand right on the ball by number 43, Matt McCoy, who has really been the best linebacker tonight for San Diego State. Grigsby jumps on it. A very unique way of getting a key first down, but they have one, and here come the Aztecs from the 15. A pair of Lobo turnovers in this quarter. San Diego State three for the game. Well, New Mexico keeps inviting San Diego State back in this football game. They've opened the door. Let's see if the Aztecs will walk in. On first down, Blitz, Paul. Throws intercepted. Gabriel Fulbright. Everybody's in a giving mood here in this quarter. The Boo Birds are out. Number two on the night for Fulbright. Now that is miscommunication between a quarterback and his receiver. Great protection up front. Drops back. It looked like... It looks like Pitts didn't know what to do here, whether it's to go inside or outside, over the top, see? Oh. You never want to do that to your quarterback. You start inside, underneath the defensive back, and you go back over the top. It, it looked yeah. a little bit like what Dave was talking about a while ago, where everybody going out deep and making the routes as you go along. As a receiver, it's a cardinal sin. You don't want to commit to that angle of the route and then readjust it. First down, Lobos out at the 27th. And Bird gets to the 28. Well, well, how about that for San Diego State? You're twice in the last five minutes inside the 20 with first downs, no points. Well, Is their it? red zone percentage, not very good to start the night, and it's going way down. Yeah, it, it, team confidence here. You know, Adams, you know, people in the stands think that it was Adams' fault, you know, and that's the one thing that, that people don't realize here. You know, uh, right there, it just showed that the receiver was trying to come underneath for a touchdown pass, and he, and he goes over the top, and it's intercepted. Impressive numbers. Once you get to the far corner, you see four picks. Now Kelly throws complete across the 40 to the 41. First down, Hank Basket. Basket earlier blocked the punt, which led to a touchdown. He's got a first down reception. Pick up 13 yards on that, play. that play is designed to hopefully break it big, catch the uh, the secondary people, especially the corners coming up on that side, 
and biting on the run, but San Diego State, nothing doing on that, although New Mexico didn't get the first down. Dontrell Moore, back in at Terrible. The option to the right, Moore around the corner. Chased out of bounds, picks up seven. Kirk Morris it ushers him to the bench. They will be second down in about three. Sticking with that option play, and you see Dontrell Moore just yakking away on the field. And good job downfield blocking. And actually, there wasn't anyone there to block. Of Morris and Rocky Long compares him a little bit to Erlocker. He's not as fast as Brian was, but he's very instinctive and probably a better linebacker now than Brian was at the start of his career at the middle linebacker spot. Morrison is a junior. And he's a great football player. More first down yardage and a lot more. Inside the 40 to the 36. And Morrison and Underwood together making the tackle 11 yards on the carry. Those big guys up front are just wearing down the defensive line. And that's part of it. And once Moore gets into the secondary, nobody's coming up to put a hit on him. And uh, the Aztecs have not tackled well at all in the secondary. And part of that, I think, is the fact that Marcus Demps, I don't believe he's played at all tonight. He's had an injured ankle, and, and he's a very, very solid defensive back. And uh, it definitely helps with the run. Heath Farwell banged up and being attended to. Moore now up to 92 yards rushing. Missed tackle in the backfield there. A little shake and bake. Yeah, not bad. But if the Lobos keep it north and south, they, they can they, they can just run out the clock going north and south. I, I'm not a big fan of this, you know, the, the, the option they're doing. They're getting a few yards here and there, but I think they're getting most of the yards up the middle on this defense. One has to wonder next week in Salt Lake City if either team will score if the Lobo defense against the Utah <laughs> defense. Might be our first shutout. Farwell in the pile there. You see number 44 pull up lane. He's off the field. And we're ready to resume. First down New Mexico, the 36. D.D. <laughs> D. Cox off D. D. gets three. Running behind Lensmeyer and Terrell. You mentioned Lensmeyer. He had an MCL injury uh, during the BYU game and was considered before the injury the best, probably the best player on this team. And uh, they, they love the way he helps call signals. He really stabilizes the line. And I think that's one of the big reasons why this line has been probably more average than uh, a lot of folks thought it would be. Second down and eight. As time ticks down for the end of this third quarter. Play action. Kelly with all kinds of time will keep it. Get to the 30. A couple yards short of the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Right around the 29. So it'll be third down and about three. We'll have one more play to the third quarter. You think about the surprises in this Mountain West Conference so far this season. Utah has to be one of them with the new coach. The defense is not, but the, just the whole team has got to be a big surprise. And then San Diego State's defense, one of the big surprises in the conference. And then BYU's drop-off after beating New Mexico, certainly a big shocker. Cougars lose again today at Wyoming. Cox, first down run, muscles to the 20. And that will bring the third quarter to a close. And New Mexico tacked on 10 points to extend their advantage. And it's 27 to 7 Lobos. 27 to 7 New Mexico with the lead and the football. And looking for more as we begin the fourth quarter. Here are the numbers through three quarters. And New Mexico starting to pile up some impressive numbers. They struggled on offense during the first half. But here's a look at the third quarter statistics brought to you by CompuTech Consultants. Fellas? Boy, has that changed from the first half. 
New Mexico just owned the third quarter. Now just about even in rushing and passing. And, and San Diego State, Dan, with only 26 yards rushing. That's not good. They're going to have to get the ball back in their hands and uh, get the ball down the field and score some points here. But first, they're going to have to stop the Lobos here. First down, ball on the 20. Dave McCann, Mike Powers, Dan McGuire. Oh, oh, man. Oh, better. gosh. Oh, my. Touchdown dropped. He was so wide open, he didn't want it. He didn't want it. What a great move that was. Sanders doesn't have a touchdown grab this season. That may be the closest well, he gets. He, he has not had good hands. I mean, he, he's a great athlete who has not been able to, to haul these in. He set that slant fade up perfectly. Took two steps inside, went back to the corner. Just need to bring the ball into his, into his chest. Second and ten. to the run with D.D. Cox. And Cox is inside the 10. Very close to a first down. Josh Dean on the tackle. They've run that delay draw three times now, and they've, they've gained some pretty good yards at it. 31 yards now for D.D. Cox. He had 187 and three scores against Texas Tech. He can certainly run the football. He came in off the bench when Dontrell Moore was hurt in the second quarter and did a great job in that Texas Tech game. First and goal, Lobos. Looking to put this one away. Big fullback, Bird. We've seen a lot of Bird here in the second half. And he takes it to the five. And flags come out late. Well, that's getting a bit ridiculous if it's it's on New the Mexico. Aztec, it's on it's on the Aztecs. It's on I, I want to say it's on uh, Brooke Miller. Frustration starting yep. to show through. This is a defense. Hands in the face. Out to the play. Dead ball. Yeah. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. Half the distance. Automatic first down. The defense is frustrated. The defense has played a pretty good game. It's that they have not gotten any help from their offense. Well, Remember that one of the uh, touchdowns for New Mexico was on the special teams, the block punt. And they've, at times, been on the field a long time. But you're right, the offense just hasn't been able to, to give them much of a break. Four carries for Bird for 18 yards. First and goal from the three after the penalty. And a dive over the line to D.D. Cox. Cuts the deficit in half and moves the Lobos closer. In the third quarter, Casey Kelly was three for three. That's all he had to do was just manage the game, make some good passes, make good decisions. That last incompletion was his first of the second half, and it was a good pass. Kelly, 8 of 14, 119 yards, one interception on this drive, 11 plays, 71 yards. That takes us to this moment. Second and goal for New Mexico. And it's Cox again. And he's denied once again. Five rushing touchdowns on the year for D.D. Cox, but Josh Dean is there to throw him back. And it's third and goal. And Mr. Touchdown, Dontrell Moore, checks in. One thing that Dontrell Moore can do that D.D. Cox doesn't do as well is he can go over the top. Dontrell Moore is real good at, at uh, from short yardage going over the top for a touchdown. Let's see if that's what they have in mind. Moore looking for a three-touchdown night. Third and goal. Moore a deep pitch. And down he goes. Keith Farwell wraps him up. And even with that gigantic offensive line, and not needing very much to go, they go outside. They choose to go outside. I don't know why. I, I would take the ball up the middle with, uh, with more. Well, what's happened is the Aztecs ha have read this every, almost every time. They, they know it's coming. They've anticipated it. And the Lobos have had very little success with that option over the past quarter or so. Zunker to attempt his third field goal of the night. This a 21-yarder 
And it's good. So instead of three touchdowns from Moore, it's the third field goal from Zunker. And with 11.55 to go in the football game, it is now New Mexico 30, San Diego State 7. But New Mexico with 23 points off San Diego State mistakes. 11.55 to go in the football game. Sports West is your source for sports on the Internet. The latest information on schedules and upcoming telecasts. Be sure to enter to win exciting prizes, tickets, special promotions from these featured sponsors. So log on tonight, sportswest.tv, powered by I4 Solutions. It's been a busy night, especially a busy second half for Wes Junker. He's ready to kick it off again. This may be his best night as a Lobo with those three field goals. Hasn't missed anything. He's done a good job kicking off. Connerly. Not much of a lane waiting for him. He gets to the 24. Billy Strutter pulls him down. Well, Adam Hall's had a tough go with four interceptions. The Lobos, most interceptions in the game since November of 1997. As you see, uh, look at that scoring drive, which started with a Aztec turnover. Is it, is it hazy here, or is that just me? I think it's the San Diego haze. Is that haze. what it is? I thought it was smoke at the beginning of the game that they put out there, and it just hasn't cleared. Hall on first down, throws incomplete, intended for Jeff Webb. Payne on the coverage, but this is an Aztec offense that just doesn't have the zip. Just look at the body language right there. He's, he's walking back to the huddle. Go back to the way this football game started. San Diego State wins the toss. They want the ball. They drive 72 yards. First and goal at the eight. Settled for a 22-yard field goal, which they miss. Yeah. And it just hasn't been the same since. On second and ten, Hall throws, and he throws behind Devin Pitts. It'll be third and ten. That's been something of a regular occurrence tonight, Brad Hall. Hey, he hasn't been real sharp tonight. Just a quick three-step drop. You want to throw to the to the outside shoulder there, but he's he's throwing it two feet outside his shoulder. His, his, his timing seems to be a little bit off, and I don't know if it's, if it's been, you know, uh, you know, taking him some time the last two weeks getting in the game type situations, but uh, he seems to be a little bit off tonight. Third and ten. Aztecs three and twelve on third down. Ball into the turf once again. Ball yeah. fluttering, not quite getting there. Three and out again for San Diego State. It's a lonely feeling, isn't it, when you're a quarterback who just doesn't quite have it? Yeah, and I, I, I'm curious to see if uh, Kraft sticks with him or not. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's late in the fourth. 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter here. You're down by 23 points. You know, and he's completed just three of his last 13 passes. Once again, you got guys coming in late, late onto the field. These guys, it's it's lack of focus. It's a lack of direction out there right now. Yeah, it's happened several times tonight. The turnable for counter. Let's see if he can break one. Gets a big. Oh my! And oh, counter. Please be all right. Out at the 45. That's an all-star hit there. Get Billy up. Struther peeled off to set the wall and laid a hit, a big-time hit. And Terrell Mays is in the daze. Please. Mays is down. We'll take another look at that big hit when we come back. 30-7, to New Mexico. Welcome back, 30-7. to New Mexico, and we'll take another look at that huge block in just a moment. Lobo's ball at the 45. Kelly, the option look, dives, tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. He may have picked up a half of a yard. Here it is, just a moment ago. Listen to this. 
Billy Struther is the lead man on the wall, and you see number 17 right there. Textbook hit. Wow. Just how they teach you. He head got up, up, head up, shoulder through the numbers. Mays got up under his own power and ran off the field while we were away to break, which is certainly good to see after a hit like that. Second down, about nine and a half. And now the Lobos would just like to run the clock and get out of town. D.D. Cox over the right side. As you look ahead for New Mexico, a win here tonight gets into one and one in conference. Utah is three and zero. Oh. Lobos go to Utah next Saturday, beat the Utes in Salt Lake City. You look at your home slate, which will be a challenge, yeah. but doable. Colorado State, Air Force, UNLV pay a visit November. As Rocky Long said, hey, last year taught them you can lose the Air Force early, regroup, and still accomplish your goals. And, and they've come out focused tonight against San Diego State. Flag comes down. Kelly on the keeper, Dean on the tackle. If New Mexico does, as you say, win tonight and go to win at Utah, then you'd have to consider them if not the favorite, certainly one of the favorites. Holding offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. With, I, I with think they'd have to be the favorite because of the home field advantage. Exactly, down the they, have, they have Air Force, as you mentioned, at home, Colorado State at home. And they owe Colorado State. Yeah, they played a oh. great game last year for the title over in Fort Collins. Colorado State has had New Mexico's number. They've played some close games, but CSU just managed to make uh, the most plays. Tyler Goss back on the kick for New Mexico. And Connerly is deep. They were going 10 yard line for San Diego State. This one returnable. Puts his hand up though and says, I'll take it right here. And the Aztecs will have the ball at the 19 yard line. 33 yard punt from Tyler Goss. San Diego State has Wyoming in town next week, which you can see on Sports West. As Mike Dugalecki checks in for Tom Crafts, so a quarterback change with 9.35 to go. And Dugalecki started the season very well against Ohio State. Certainly seen plenty of action. He comes out throwing on first down. Nine yards to Jeff Webb. I like this the, the change here. I mean, I don't think it's really any any slap against Adam Hall. He just doesn't have it tonight. He's had the injuries. No sense keeping him in the game. I agree. I, Adam's had a rough night tonight. He's thrown some for some yards, but he hasn't been real effective. And uh, it, it, it's it's not a bad decision to put him in here and see what he can do. Dugalecki started his college career at Illinois. It's D'Angelo Ned with a first down run out to the 35. Ned, a senior out of West Hills, California. New Mexico will need three more wins with five remaining to become bowl eligible. San Diego State now, if this game holds up, will need to win out to become bowl eligible. And that's going to be awfully hard to do. They still have to go to Las Vegas and over to Colorado State. Somebody got a, a hand on it right there. The, the big guy, Daniel Kegler, got off to a real slow start this year, but he's refocused and has played well the last three or four games. Got a lot of men on the defense make big plays in this game tonight. And second down. Ned up the middle. It'll be third down and about six. I've always felt that, that San Diego State was a sleeping giant. Back when you played, Dan, I, I felt like, you know, one ingredient here, another one there, and, the, and they could be a power, but it's just never, never happened. Get third down and Dan six. On that in a second. First down. Yeah, it, it, it's been that way since I left in 90. It's just Marshall Falk came in. They almost got over the top. It just seems like they just keep on falling short. I think Tom Kraft, second season here, first recruiting class. 
He's, he's trying to. His knee was down. He's down. Yeah, down right there. But Tom Crabb, he's done a, he had a great recruiting class this past season. He's trying to build the foundation here. He's got he's got some young guys out there playing right now for him. He just wants to build a solid foundation and hopefully get over the top. Another first down, Connerly on the reception. It was interesting when we talked with with uh, Coach Kraft during the week that he brought up Rocky Long as an example of what you can get done if you build a foundation. And once you get the foundation built, you can do as New Mexico's done, which is get better and better each year. And he's hoping to do that. That's as uh, Ned goes in for a first down off the left side. But as Dan, as you mentioned, he's he had a great recruiting class that he says you won't see for two or three years. But it's just trying to keep everyone patient and uh, well, they have to allow him to do that. You know, they they, they have a keeper in uh, Hamilton, you know, true freshman. You know, he's, he's done a heck of a job. He will have a great three or four years here, depending on how long he stays. I think he is the next Marshall Paul. And for New Mexico, they're finished rebuilding. They're now a contender. Deep ball, Gugalecki, incomplete. Intended, intended for receiver. Ortiz. Wiley on the coverage. But the Lobos, you can almost say the Lobos are, are over the, the hump. Because they haven't won the outright title, but they're now, they're now in the top half of the conference year in and year out. They have. And, and the media poll this year was the first year where they've gotten the respect of sort of the outsiders, you know, pick what, uh, second, I believe, yeah. in, in the media. It just had not happened in the future, or in the past, rather. Gugalecki to his tight end, Justice. I voted for New Mexico to take That's second. I picked That's BYU good. first, because, and then I thought this, the champion would come down to the BYU-New Mexico game. Right out of the gate. But the Cougars lose their quarterback to a broken Lots hand, and they've gone the other right way. Right and New Mexico, as obvious as we've seen tonight, has regrouped. They recharged during the bye week, and they will now look to have won their 10th straight game after a bye. That's a pretty amazing record. Dugalecki nearly picked off, and so they're going to grab one of those before we're done tonight. Watson makes his first catch of the night as his coaches go to their bench with seven minutes to play. Just a quick three-step drop here. Inside receiver going to the flat. Defender tries to pick it off. And when that happens, you can get upfield for like five, ten more yards. They don't use their tight end very much. They don't. It's uh, yeah, they, they, they use them for some blocking, but it's basically a four receiver and a back set. One back set. Dugalecki over the middle and he throws behind his tight end. And I think that that's one reason the, the tight end, lack of a, an efficient tight end, is why they have trouble scoring inside in the, red the red zone. In the red zone, exactly. And that's one thing Coach Kraft talked to us this week about, is trying to improve down there in the red zone, and they have not been effective this evening. Second down and 10 from the 20. Dugalecki pumps, goes to the end zone. And it is intercepted. And for the third time tonight, it's Gabriel Fulbright. Two of them have been in the end zone or at the goal line. And uh, quite a night for the sophomore out of DeSoto, Texas. A little bit of a coming out party for him because he had taken plenty of heat in Albuquerque this year for uh, getting burned. He didn't bite on the, uh, on the fake pump there and the ball is thrown short. Your receiver needs to try to come back and knock that ball down. And he got smart. He's, he says, hey, I could, I'll just cut my losses here and put a knee down and give my offense the ball at the 20. There he goes. All those first hits into the 20 yard line. So what do we do here? Throw it? Let's go. Let's <laughs> keep with the option. <laughs> wow, look at this. That looks like an unenthused defense that's giving up. D.D. Cox over the left side. And that's just what San Diego State doesn't need right now. They need to, they need to keep, keep coming after it. I mean, if they want to get over this hump and be in the top, top half of the Mountain West Conference, they have, to, they have to play a full 60 minutes. Find motivation. Stay in the game. You can make yourself better 
if you keep playing hard. You can make yourself as an individual better, and you can make your team better. And was that not the third or fourth time in the red zone tonight where San Diego State yep. has not got anything? Cox. Good evening, New Mexico. I'm Cindy Coriz. It's time for pick three for Saturday, October 18th. We're going to mix up your numbers right now, so get your tickets ready. Here they come. Good luck. First um, number up for tonight is number nine. Seven is next. I assure you that's a seven and one. Nine, seven, and one. There we go. Those are your winning pick three numbers for tonight. And I'll see you again right after the news for Roadrunner Cash. Good luck. They got a shot at him, that's for sure. Second down and five. Look at that line search. Jeez, three, four yards off the line of scrimmage. First down run, D.D. Cox. I know the game is over for all intents and purposes here, but, you know, still play with heart and soul and fire, you know. Don't don't lay over. That's, that's you know, not acceptable. Well, this... This offensive line is just beaten and beaten and beaten that front group of San Diego State, which played very effective on defense in the first half. Well, this tonight's game will end the streak of close football games in this series. 30 to 7 and maybe more. It's the same play over and over again right now. Just run the clock out. D.D. Cox isn't complaining. Grigsby in on another tackle. Well, Wyoming will come to San Diego next week feeling good about themselves, having defeated BYU today. And they bring a quarterback and a crew, which may be the best receiving crew in the entire conference, to town. And we might be here all night next week. Well, Wyoming has struggled mightily in recent years, but they've had an outstanding offense. They've been fun to watch when they have the ball. They held BYU to 10 points today. It was, probably says more about BYU's offense. Kelly going deep. Incomplete. And that stops the clock with 4.16 to go. Trying to lull the sleep there, huh? I'm expecting a run. <laughs> Well, they've been going to the well, giving it to the tailback, letting him run, and I guess they just decided, let's, let's make sure they're awake out there in the secondary. <laughs> New Mexico's five interceptions tonight ties a school record set back in 1991 in a loss here at San Diego State. How'd you do against the Lobos? Yeah, you put some yards up. No, I was 2-0. 2-0. Now Kelly goes back to D.D. Cox into Aztec territory. And up to be third and about three. Grigsby, another tackle. I'll bet Dontrell Moore's not too happy in the sidelines. He has 92 yards. He wants that 100 mark. Get that 100 yard play. One more play, coach. One more play. If, if he's on your fantasy team, you really need him to get over 100. <laughs> People going, hey, just, just put him in for one more. If we look at D.D. Cox. That's just a delay draw. Shuffles to the side, two steps, waits, lets the offensive lineman create the holes for him. Punting units in, Franklin deep to receive, so you throw deep. But on third and three, you'll run it. Go figure. Here's Franklin. Yeah, you'll try the deep ball on second down, but on third down, you'll run it. And give the ball back. 3.27 to go. And we'll see the Aztecs on offense when we It's presented by Xbox Live, and here's the Xbox big play. And it comes from Billy Struther, who's already returned a block punt in for a touchdown. But there he lays out Terrell Mays, one of the biggest hits you'll see. Mays, no idea what's coming. And Struther lays him out. That's the Xbox big play. At least if you can see it coming, you can kind of prepare for it. Your head always has to be on a swivel. Dugalecki <laughs> on first down. Throws complete out close to a first down. Porter, nine yards. Second down and one. Getting back to that 
that punt return and the hit by Struther. You know, Rocky Long has a philosophy of showing, of putting his best players, many of them, on special teams. And I think that has really paid off for, for New Mexico, considering this is a team that hasn't had the depth that other teams have had, in, in, at least in recent years. Ned on the carry. And he is short of the first down. It'll be third down. I'm kind of surprised we didn't see the Aztecs try the deep ball. You know, and they'd said, hey, New Mexico might not let him get, get behind him. And there's a fumble on the sack. Struther in there again. And the Lobos have it. There might be your Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Joe Solander came up with the ball. I suppose you could go with uh, Billy Struther or Gabriel Fulbright if you're going to pick a New Mexico Lobo. Take a look at this again. There's the strip. And Sealander pulls it in. Sixth turnover of the night for San Diego State. New quarterback for New Mexico. <laughs> Cole McKamey. Go, 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 go. Right up the middle where they've been able to pound away some big yards. Tony Frazier with the nine-yard run. So the question is, does he does he go for the end zone here or does he take a knee? He's got 2.18 on the clock. Well, he'll... He'll at least go for the first down here, obviously. I think probably. Yeah. Get the first down and then pick a knee. Or does he put it in the end zone? I mean, <laughs> I mean, they want to score, too. I think they're going to the end zone. You here. think so? Second down and one. And that is first down yardage. Frazier be very close if he didn't get it. The executive producer of Sports West Productions is Michael Miner. His game produced tonight by Jesse Christensen, director Jim Orton, associate producers Jason Bott. Mobile facilities and transmission services provided by WIC Mobile Productions. We thank our entire staff and crew here in San Diego tonight. Dave, we've been, we've been rather critical about some of the play calling tonight, but you just have to look at the scoreboard to see whatever they were doing for the most part worked it worked well it, you know it helped to have turnovers six tonight fourth down or first down and goal from the four and they run straight ahead the flags fly on both sides of the line tony frazier getting some late work well they won't need to run but a couple of more plays. Minute 34. This will back them up five. Unless they've been on. Illegal formation. In. Six players on the line of scrimmage. Offense. Five yards. First down. I think Frazier wants to get in. He does, but these coaches don't forget. I mean, the game's over. Yeah. The game's over, and if you know, you kind of rub it in. It kind of hurts. Coaches don't forget that. Don't kick me while you're down. The San Diego State team, got to believe, is going to bounce back. Whether they can do it this year or not, it's a learning process. They're going to have to build the foundation, and they're going to be okay. They're going to go for the end zone. Frazier pushed out of bounds. McCoy trying to keep him out of the end zone. Minute six to go. Well, you may see a little bit of fire from that San Diego State defense right now. We haven't seen much of it here in the second half, but uh, I, th I think they may take a little bit of uh, be insulted if New Mexico tries to put that ball in. Second down and goal from the seven. Right up the middle. This is Landrick Brody inside the five to the four. Under a minute to go. At the conclusion of the game, we present the most valuable player presented by AT&T Wireless, Wireless Service America Trust, and by Nokia, connecting people.
the AT&T Wireless Nokia MVP for tonight's game. Don Trail Moore, a couple of touchdown runs, 92 yards. It was his 45-yard run. Really opened things up in that third quarter and helped New Mexico pull away. Third down, and this time they will put a knee down. This is a quarterback's favorite play. It does seem to indicate that good things have happened for your troops. So the game is over, yes. By the way, your color analysts would disagree with your pick for MVP of the game, but we're, we're going to let you off the hook. I uh, just read what I'm giving. <laughs> <laughs> so New Mexico will improve to four and three on the year. One and one in the Mountain West. They're right there in the mix. They take a road trip to first place in Utah next Saturday. San Diego State drops to three and five after that three and one start. And they're 0-3 in conference play for the first time since 1994. Rocky Long and the Lobo defense prevails 30-7. to You're watching college football on Sports West, and we're back after a message from your local station. The in the Mountain West Conference. Now look at the final numbers presented by Computech Consulting. Technology problems? Not anymore. Aztecs, 39 yards rushing. Passing yards, 354. Holy yards, 393. We got to get the lights turned down. I, know, I can't see. Can't well, see. What what you hopefully can see is the turnovers, two and six. And by the time New Mexico picked up that second one, their last one, the, the game was well out of reach. And, and asking you shall receive right there. So that's the key to the game. Considering New Mexico and and San Diego State were almost dead even on time of possession, you wouldn't think you could get a 30 to seven score like that. The Lobo defense really clamped down after those initial drives by San Diego State, which almost made it look like it was going to be a shootout. Uh, right out of the gate like that, both teams moved the ball up and down the field, but too many mistakes from San Diego State. And then just in that, in that third quarter, New Mexico just dominated offensively despite that one turnover. All right, we'll be back with some final thoughts in a moment. 30-7, New Mexico's a winner at Qualcomm Stadium. Thank you.